This week's episode is sponsored by Soap Events Limited. They provide soap football, battle tag archery, UV dodgeball, sports days events, inflatable assault courses, plus many, many more activities coming soon. Idea for sports teams, presentations, birthday parties, stag and hen parties, corporate events, school, and half term summer camps, any occasions. Give them a follow and use the code The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly podcast for 10% off your first booking. Tony Morell. Welcome to the Good, the Bad and the Ugly podcast with me, Tony Morell, and this week's special guest is Derry Matthews. Thanks for coming on, Derry. Really appreciate your time and really looking forward to you sharing the good, the bad and the ugly. How's things, mate? All good, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, my first ever podcast as well, so I'm you know, to do yours. I'm, I'm over the moon, mate. And obviously, we spoke um, off camera and stuff, and you've obviously said you've had loads of uh, invites to go on podcast, and I'm we're honoured to have you on the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, thanks very much for your time today, mate. No problem, mate. No problem. So, we're going to get that right into it. I uh, just want to start with where you grew up, where you're from, what school was like, and family life. Um, I'm from Langley, which is small state in Everton, but Bangsdale Street, but everyone knows us Langley. Um, it's a proper estate, I call it. Proud to be from there. Um, an estate where there was a massive part of me. Yeah, it still is. Even though I don't live there, it's still a massive part. Still the state I'm from there. Um, and it was good. Upbringing was perfect. I had a great mum. Um, worked her ass off to get me the best of everything. So I had, I had, a, I had a good life. Um, down to me mum. Single parent. My dad come into my life later on as I got older. But... Growing up, I had a good, I had a good, a good upbringing. I had good family around me, good uncles, aunties, a great sister. And um, we played the dad role, so I had a good time. I yeah. know a lot of people come on here and keep a lot of them want sort of sad stories. So mm. they would have been this, they would have been that, but I would not. I had a good, yeah, good family around me who backed me to the, to the most, and I got a lot of respect for them. Brilliant. So what was the community spirit like? Where you were from? It's brilliant. Listen, like people who know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, who know our state, know that. It, it's listen, it, it, it's rough and ready. Um, you know, you, you, you're a fighter on there, you play football. We've got great, great fellas who, like, we see every day still now. I go with Frank Jones, Tanky, we call him, the, the, the dad. He'd have a 20 sap match on the grass <laughs> on the bottom next goal of winner every night, every night of the, through the week. Proper memories, aren't yeah, they? Memories, never got John Dunbar who's doing a great job in, in the area you now. Um, going to the U Club, the shoes of U Club, and people like that, they're like. For me, they're, they're the ones who are the heroes. They're like, getting the kids off the street doing, doing lots for them. And I boxed with the Solly. Um, growing up, which is on, on our estate, I lived a couple of doors. So I, where I first lived, I lived in Salisbury Street, um, which is, I lived next door to the Solly Gym, mm-hmm. right next door, so I could never be late. Um, <laughs> and that was our U-Club. On our estate, there was no U-Club. So the nearest one was the shoes, which was through the park and over on Lost Commerce Street. But, the solid was my club where, where I learned everything from the age of eight. And then we moved around the corner onto Langy um, into another house. But the solid is where it sits me, me bed and butt. That's where, that's where it all started from. You never, you never forget where, you never forget where it come from, like, no. no. And, and I still, it's still a massive part of me now. I still call in there occasionally. It's Peter Allen Lynch, the gaffer, on a regular basis. Paul Eddie's doing it. Yeah, there. yeah. Top coach, David Bear, Paul Lawson, Cy Clay, Jimmy Carroll coached me as well, Franny Smith. And they're all still there now. Yeah, they're all still involved. They're all still involved. It's good to see that though, isn't it? Because yeah. you see like boxing gyms, youth clubs, and they all start to fade away. And like, the, you know, the people who've been behind it. And this is all voluntary as well, yeah, isn't it's, it? it's voluntary work. And I had, listen, I, had, I still say to this day, I had the best damage coach in the game, um, Tony Chandler. There's nothing he'd ever done for us. For me, Nathan Brough, Lee Sina, you name the lads in that club, Paul Edwards, the Burke brothers, you name the lads in the club. He's done everything for us. Everything. I mean, like, take us every show. We must have went, we were out five nights a week. <laughs> at, at boxing shows. If one of us boxed, we all boxed. So you all went and we followed each other. Yeah. I had this little red van of about 20 of us. Now we get nicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'd be 20 of us in there. They're just memories you can't buy. And you, you, like, some of us, most of us went to get fed. You get a dinner ticket every time. Like, you go on spec. Yeah. So, you don't do it now. You used to go on spec. Um, and if anyone never made the weight, you could, if you were the same age and weight, you'd get on. Or if someone failed a doctor, so you'd get the box. Most of the times you get a bout, 
But half the time, I want to get fed anyway. That's my tea. I'm sure you go, you weigh in, you, you, I'm on spectrum to get a dinner ticket, you get fed, <laughs> watch the boxing. And it was, they're the memories you can't, you can't buy. And going up in that club, it's, it's, been, it's been brilliant. Big part of your life, Oh, it? yeah, and it, listen, and I still stay to now. It's probably the best club in Britain, and it still is to this day. Yeah, yeah. Producing champions after champions. Um, you only have to look at the history of the club, you only have to look in the club. Um, and so Tony Chandler played a blessing, a massive, massive part of me. Um, growing up, starting my career from the age of eight with him. And I finished my amateur career with him. And then I went on to be a professional fighter, as we'll speak about that later yeah, on. But yeah. Tony and the Sorry just, listen, I can't speak highly of him. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the other, bo- the other co- the boxers, I should say, I knew the coaches. I'll speak highly of him. Yeah, and yeah. He, he went on to be the regional coach. Now he's got, he's got a boxing academy up in Manchester. Um, I've got that much trust in him. I've just sent one of my fighters to him to do his college work up in Well Manchester. respected fellow. Yeah, yeah, because I know, I know what he's about. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's it's it's, it's mad. good to hear that though. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, and I see a lot of fighters nowadays they leave clubs, they get beat, they leave club, they blame, they blame this, they blame that. They don't blame themselves. Yeah, yeah. I got you've got to be real sometimes. I mean, listen, I'm not a fighter yeah. myself. I wish it was. I wish it was a fighter, but yeah. uh, but um, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to fucking box or anything. But I just think sometimes the book stops with the fighter or whatever. But. Sometimes I, I, you do see a lot of that in boxing. You do see like you know fighters maybe they, you know they have a bad bad results or whatever, and the next thing it's you know the, the, the jumping ship and stuff. But yeah, and you you do um, and like I go back to, back to the amateur career. I won schoolboy title, junior ABA title, NABC title. Got beaten in the junior ABA final to Lee Askins. Got disqualified. Um, I never forget that Tony Chandler kicking off in the changing room, black just screaming. Not at me. I, I, what happens with the referee? Um, and then won a senior ABA title at the age of 17. Um, box for England. I remember boxing for England as a, as a, a schoolboy, sorry, as a, as a youth. Mm-hmm. But it was a junior then. Went to Junior Olympics out in America, captain the team out there, won a gold medal. And then Tony just pulled me out of the England team. Um, he, he'll, stay, he'll say this himself, and I've listened to him recently on a podcast just to get the memories back. And he said that he, he contacted England and said, um, Teddy won't be getting involved anymore. Um, he he's, 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 yeah, he struggles travelling away from home. Because I had to go down to Crystal Palace. Every, I was 15, 16, travelling to Crystal Palace every weekend. Oh, so, so it was just a weekend, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was, just a, but it was Friday. It was like Friday to Sunday, Friday to Monday. Was you um, homesick and stuff like that? Not homesick, but I was, I was a kid. I was, you know what I mean? I, I, was, and I, I never had a shave till I was 26. 20, <laughs> I, was a, I was a baby. I was like a, a late mature. I, yeah. I never, Matured, I was late and I was, a, I was a baby getting on the train with your bags. And I remember going down with Stephen Burke, Dave Mulholland. And you were only 15, was you? Well, they, they're older than me, so yeah. they like looked after me, yeah, so yeah. they guided me. But then then Nathan started coming along because Nathan was younger than me. Um, and then it just it went on from there, and then Tony cancelled that. And then as I got older than my career, I, started, I, went, I entered the ABAs. Did you ever ask him about why he cancelled or did you just... No, he, he, I'll be honest with you, I always made excuses up. Can't be arsed, I'll, I don't feel well. So we just went one day, you know what, we're done with them. And I went everywhere with England. I, I, I should have done more with England. Yeah, well, that was, that was, some, that was sort of a question I was going to ask you. Was there any... But we'll get to that towards the yeah, end. Yeah, I, 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 like, I won. I, I, I went. I travelled to France, Germany, went to Bosnia, Sarajevo. You've been uh, all over the fucking I went, world, the, I went to the European Games. I remember going to the European Games. We had me, Pricey, Nathan Bruff. Three out of one club. Well, Pisces went after the club then, he was at Long Lane. Um, but me and Nathan, like, it's mad because he's, he's back coaching in my gym now. He's got a, he's got a pro stable and we were best mates going up in the Sorry and we're still mates to this day. And we were always England number ones, me and him. So it was easy for us. We had like, yeah, we had we had teamwork, teammates, and Pisces was flying at the time as well. And we went to the European Games out in Bosnia, Sarajevo, and then. From there, we just like, we just, everyone just sort of, I went pro. I so I went, so how it worked out then it was, you could be, you had to be 18 the year of the ABAs. Um, so you had to be 18 the year of the ABA finals. And then, so I was still 17 when he, when he entered them, but I was 18 the, the, like, the like year the time of it. came around. And yeah. I said, Nathan and them aren't, so I'm not all over in the same school, yeah. They're not. 18, I was 18 well before them. Yeah. So I could enter them. Um, 
And remember saying, and remember Tony Chan saying, we're going to own ABAs. You're going to do 54 kilo, which is, which is bantamweight. Um, I went, okay. I said, I'm going to win them, you know. And anyway, I went, was you that confident? Was confident you? Yes, everyone is. And then, Shane took Lara to him, and then they had a lad from Golden Gloves, Mark Moran, great fighter, Southpaw. We'd never clashed, we'd never boxed because he was older than me. Yeah, so you never, you've passed and never no, crossed. So, so, as a school, as a youth and a junior, you couldn't, or a schoolboy, we couldn't box because he was more than 18 months older than me. Oh, so, nice. when we got to senior level, you're allowed to box anyone. So, then in the ABAs that year, the Commonwealth Games were in Manchester. Oh, right, yeah. So, the winners of the ABAs had an opportunity, got told they were going to Commonwealth Games. So, long story short, I went to the ABAs. Mark Moran never entered him. Um, he got already being told he was going to the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games. So, realistically, ne- from, what I, what I, from my story is, he never took the chance. Wait. Yeah, and then, so when the ABAs, anyway, I won them, knocked, I think I had five, bout, five fights in them, knocked four of them out, boxed me, me England roommate in the final. Um, Fred How's that feel, obviously? Yeah, at, at the time, it's you all. It sounds mad, yeah. doesn't it? Even though you're make friends yeah. and whatever. It's we, you we, all went like, we went to Junior Olympics together. We went. We went everywhere together. Yeah. Junior Olympics, France, Germany. We went to Belgium, Belarus. All, all my, we all went mad places together. Um, and he was shit hot. He was <laughs> shit. You must shit have sparred together yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was always bigger than me. He was always the weight above. Oh right, yeah. He was, he was well, well bigger than me. So I, as I was growing, I was moving, going up in weight and. I remember beating him in the ABA final. I was seventeen. I just won an ABA ABA title. I still still to this day. The youngest, I'm the youngest one. Yeah, yeah. Youngest elite. It's, a good it's called the elite now. Yeah. But I'm the youngest one ever ever champion. Proud uh, achievement. Yeah, achieve, massive. Isn't? Yeah. And then to go on the great, you know, the the history of the, the city. Who's won it? That's a massive achievement. And Paul Smith won it the night I won it. Pear or Joe Ainsgold won it the night I won it. Joe Ainsgold. Yeah. yeah. Um, I might have been Pear or one of them won it. My Holland won it from my club, from my estate as well. Yeah, so it, it was great. It, it was it was a great to be Some a part of. Your yeah. family must have been proud and Yeah, it was. And then I was going back to Fred Holmes. Um, he passed away about, might have been a month after we boxed. Um, and that hit me, that hit me heavy. Because um, we'd been like mates from the age of 15. And then he jumped in a quarry and never, yeah, never I rose. Never come, yeah. and I'm still, I still speak to his family now. Uh, speak to his family on, on a regular basis, a little text every yeah, now and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sent him a video last week of, of me and him in the final. They hadn't seen it. Um, and I got, for some for mad reason, someone gave me it. And I've, I'd, I'd never seen it. Yeah. So I, I fired it over to them and we still... They must have... Yeah, we still in contact. Yeah, and, stuff. yeah, then it's, you know, little things like that. And you, you can't buy memories. So it's, yeah. you, it's like, you know, you can... It's no. hard, hard to describe. Yeah, of course it is. It's one of those, isn't it? But like you say, that's nice to someone's give you that and you've sent it over to them and they took some, what's name from it, you know what I mean? Positivity and he was a great lad. Um, yeah. And one I won't forget. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. So, sport, obviously boxing was a big part of your, you know, your yeah. childhood and stuff like that. Football was your... Back- yeah, I was good at football. Um, not the best, but I, yeah. but I was good at football. Um, played for the school team, captain champion for a couple of years. Believe it or not, I play centre half, um, and I was tiny, but I just love to tackle. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm going to have a good football. <laughs> <laughs> a few watching. people, I was going to say, you'd probably get loads of the lads. They made me go, fuck, yeah. I'll be shite. But I played at the right level. Um, I remember, fuck, it's mad, playing for, playing for camping then. We went on to play for Liverpool schools. Um, like the district and all that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so there was not a chance I was getting in that squad. It's so, some fucking, fucking players, John Welsh. Man. Mugen, Shuey, you know, you had Craig Black from our school, who's centre mid, great player. Um, Some players there, yeah. Really. And then that's where I first met John Walsh, that's where I played yeah. with John then. John was up to Liverpool, Shuey yeah. went to, yeah. Mac- went to Everton. He's playing with Manager you now. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, when I say I played for them, I never like played, we just we had trials and then we got selected, but we were in like a 20 man squad. Yeah, that was you, the same, that was the same. You're, you're never going to get selected over there. There's you're better players than yeah, yourself. You're just going to be a part of the squad then. I, I, I told me Charles, I stayed on his podcast a couple of weeks ago that I walked in one day and said, I'm not playing for here, I just want to box. Because I had, I had about 18 months out of boxing. 
Because oh, going cause just, just, represent to, your district. Yeah, just playing different. But yeah. you're not playing and all whatever. Yeah, I, was, so. I was just, I was just a street kid. It's like, yeah. it's like now with our kids. If our kids want to, I've got kids in our gym and they go to football. My advice would be go and play football. Go you're on. honest with them. Yeah, go and up. play football. If you can make a living out of playing football, go and play football. Because not everyone makes a living out of boxing. Yeah. It's so hard. So so hard. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch on that as well. About obviously, like what's the name in boxing and stuff like that. And um, so, what obviously, what age did you realise? I mean, when you turn, when you were gonna turn pro and stuff, what age did you? Well, it's mad, right? So I won the ABAs, um, and then I said to Tony John, I'm gonna go pro, I think. And at the time, Tony was having a, was about to take a massive break from from boxing. Um, to stuff at home happening. Yeah. Buying a new house, decorating his new house, all he was doing something. He, I know he, he bought a big house and he deserved it because he put his, ah, listen, from the age of eight, for like 10 years, he just, every, I mean every day, every day. And it's voluntary, like we said before. Don't get paid, it's voluntary every day. But it's dedication that mate. All over the country, you could be in fucking Yorkshire on a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> fucking three, two minute rounds. Just for the, to yeah. take the kid to yeah. fucking uh, out the club. And, I'm like, and he's got three daughters, and I'm thinking, how did he get away with that? Me, yeah, <laughs> fucking hell, my missus would have like, fuck that. And like, there's no, like, there was no phones or nothing there. There's yeah. no social media or nothing there, so he might have been telling his missus he was in work, and you don't know. You, yeah, you, yeah. So it, it was, it's just, it's so hard, and then... That's dedication, yeah. that means. And then I, I, I decided that I was going to go pro, um, and then I'll never, ever forget it. That this day, I was in the, bank, the music shop in town, it's the, it's now where the lobster pot is, Bang and Olsen. It used to be a music Bang and Olsen, yeah. On, on the corner there, I was with John Welsh. He just signed for Liverpool. Um, I think he was going in to buy a new telly or a new set of speakers or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a few quid, he just signed <laughs> yeah. a deal with Liverpool. And my phone rang. Um, we, you know, we've heard that you want to turn pro, blah, blah, blah. Could we have a meeting? And I'm going, I'm like that. I think it was like an Al Phillips song, so fuck off, <laughs> Ronnie. God, I'm shit, it's fucking... I'm on to someone that's rang me there. Do you well, think it was a wind up? Yeah, of course, you know what I mean? I was 17. I, was just, just eight, I think I just turned 18. Goes again. Right, it, Gary, Gary Metcalf. Um, but they that you're interested in turning pro. Um, could we have a meeting with you? I went, yeah, sound okay. Listen, that sounds good to me. Um, I didn't have a clue. What, 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 what to expect. Advise, to be advised and, and, and on what had, money and I, stuff like that. I mean, I'll come back and I'll, I'll go back with my dad later on in life but my dad walked out of my life well never walked out but yeah. got, got pushed out by my ma my ma was the boss um, <laughs> got pushed out of my life at an early age and then so I never had someone to guide me in, in, in you the had way. your mum and your sister yeah, and you know and then, yeah and you know, I had uncle a good uncle um, but I never had someone to like advise on yeah, the type of things like that I'm, I'm brand new I'm off, I'm off a council estate um, and then so long story short give me a dress said to mum, I'm getting picked up, and I think Wednesday, say, um, Gary Metcalf, he wants me to take me over to see Stephen Vaughan over the Chester to turn pro. So at the time, Stephen Vaughan owned Chester City yeah. Football Club. Um, so I, I remember sitting on the sitting on, number one line, he was in the garden, and then that next minute, a big fucking showgun, big silver showgun. And that's how, at the time, at yeah. At the time, that, that, like fucking, that like rolls really cheap. I wore an X5, top of range X5. Yeah. That pulls in. Everyone in the estate's probably uh, looking yeah, and going, yeah, what yeah, the fuck is yeah, yeah, who the fuck's he? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, anyway, get in the car, he's there, I'm Gary, blah, blah, pleased to meet you. Boom. We're going to go over and see Stephen at Chester City. Okay, sounds. But I already knew Stephen. Um, me, because my uncle... On the boxing scene from Liverpool. Yeah, well, my, anyway, yeah. my uncle married Stephen's sister, so... It, I knew, I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew George, my, so... My my cousins are Georgie's grandkids, so that yeah. helps a bit. And I knew who George was anyway, a massive fucking, massive name in the city, massive yeah. coach. Um, but I knew George hadn't coached for many years, he'd been ill. Mm. Um, he'd had a big break, but I used to always, he had a lot of gym on London Road. And my sister used to train in there, so I used to go up. And I'd watch time, watch the pros through the window and all that, and just... Try and get some what's in. He wouldn't let you in, like. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you knew, yeah, you're not getting in. It's one of them ones. <laughs> it's just strict. <laughs> and there's rules, so. Anyway, get to Chester, goes in a room, a big boardroom. Um, you're 17, you think? Yeah. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Well, I might have just been 18 at the time. 
Are you sick anyone with you? No, on my own. Put on your jacket. Yeah. I didn't have a fucking clue. I didn't have, I didn't have a clue what to ask for. <laughs> I didn't have a clue anything. Money. Yeah, I didn't know anything. Yeah, just. I didn't know anything. And at the time, we were getting money off. We were getting paid off. We previously, before the gyms England, we were getting paid off England. I was a paid scholar, I think. Um, weren't much money, but it was, it was XEs. Yeah. Um, I was an England paid fighter. I was on the world. Well, plat performance thing it was called. I've still got the letters. My mum keeps all, all all the shite. Uh, well, performance letters and how much you were on. You like a small salary and then. So I got there anyway in the office. Um, Stephen Bourne's there. Lee Maloney's there. Gary Metcalf, and there was a few others. Who, yeah. We'll talk about that later on. We'll <laughs> talk about that another time. But they, they, were, they were all in the room. Um, and just said, "I'm going to Stephen my blah blah this but." You want to turn pro? I went, yeah. He went, we want to sign you. We're a consortium. We want to sign you. And struggle off you and all yeah. that. The... Um, listen, we're going to give you seven fights your first year. Seven fucking hours. I'm going now for seven. I went, what? He went, you're going to top your own shows. I'm like, well, this is how much you're on. Here's a car. Never passed, never had a license till I was 28. <laughs> <laughs> I was a car, brand new car, like fucking hell. Driving around the city, no license, just to, just what, mad. You've got talk. a car and you didn't have a license. Yeah, they, they didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> you just saw <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. Um, got a car, I remember Gary Metcalf got me a car. Um, I had a flat, brand new apartment, lived in. Top wages. Yeah, yeah. Top wages. Then, um, it was mad. I was like, how are you dealing with all that? You're, like, you're 18 or whatever, and you think to yourself, I want to be top of my own in, in the city. I never built a fucking yeah. a big boxing city in it. And when 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 everyone gets behind their own, they get behind their own, do you know yeah. what I mean? Seven, seven, to fight seven times in one year, that's so fun. Yeah, and then, so from that, from that meeting then, and then we're all in the, in the meeting, and I went, there's, one, there's something missing now. And he went, what? I went, I'm going on coach. Because at the time, you couldn't be an amateur trainer. As a pro. As a pro you couldn't even, if you were a professional fighter, you couldn't step in an amateur gym. You weren't allowed. They were the rules. All oh, right. They were the rules. So there was no, I couldn't have Tony Chandler. Because he was an yeah. amateur, yeah, yeah. And I believed Couldn't he, he switch, couldn't he switch from amateur to, to professional? Yeah, but, but he couldn't go back. Oh, right. You were, you were, you were a... But, you were all in doing yeah, that. all in doing that, all, all in doing that. And I think, I'm a believer that things happen for a reason. Because if not, I must have wouldn't have met George. Yeah, well, I wouldn't yeah. have met George because I know him, but I mean, I wouldn't have been trained with him. And then, so we're in the room and I went, I haven't got a trainer. And Stephen went, I th- well, I, I, now I think it was already set up, <laughs> if I'm honest. Because um, I went, I haven't got a trainer. And he went, I'll ask my dad. And I'll never forget it. I went, if your dad will train me, I'll sign now. That's it. He went, what I want to be, because I knew his background, he's had every champion. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a master of the game. Um, he's the best. If I'm, if I'm honest, I'm also the best man I've ever worked with, talked with, friends with. It's fucking it's mad. <laughs> and then, so, I went, if he, if he does the deal, if he, if he trains me, I'll sign, I'll, I'll sign. sign. He went, okay. Um, so I went home. Tell your mum in that one. Like, like, been off, what, what do we do? What was your mum like when you told her, like, what, what were you offering? Imagine all, you know, my ma's never, like, <laughs> been involved with me in sport. Really, with me, she's fucking out, she's, yeah, she's yeah. everything to me. Um, but going to fights, would she go and watch No, yeah. joking either, she go to work. <laughs> she doesn't want, yeah, she doesn't want to see you get hurt phone, and stuff like phone that. Phone off, go to work or... But see you the next day, fucking yeah. black eyes and whatever. Yeah, and or, <laughs> yeah, even if I want to have black eyes. Um, <laughs> no, you've always yeah, gone to your fights, don't you? You've always caught them, whatever. Um, but never got involved. Never been in my gym. I think she's been in my gym. I've, I've had the gym seven years. I think she's been once. Yes, you, you work, that's your place of work. And I appreciate that. And I think that's why I've been successful because I haven't had a pushy parent. Yeah. I've had, go ahead, go to work. Go and do what go you've got to do. Yeah, go and do it yourself. Um, and so, go back to George. On the Friday, my phone rang. Hi, Dave, it's Georgie Vaughan. Hi, George. Um, you're turning over there, yeah. He went, okay. So I'm fucking made up, Georgie. He's gone, blah, blah, blah. He's rang you in the yeah. Yeah. Um, Georgie's rang me. I, I, we'll go running. I went, okay, we'll go at six o'clock. Deals. I'll meet, you, I'll meet you on Everton Road at six o'clock. I went, okay. Thanks, George. See you Monday. Ten minutes later. 
the plot to tell you, you know, that's six o'clock in the morning. And you're fucking joking, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it started, mate. Six, six o'clock in the morning. And that's and then so even to this day now. I know I always see it. I'm up, I'm up because uh, of him. My life's like early because of him. So six o'clock in the morning he has this bike. And for the first what? The first six months we were just doing four miles every day, getting to know each other. Um you know, I'm on a bike, he's on his bike and I'm running, he's going, what's, what's your favourite food and all that? And I'm telling him, like, I love pastas, blah, blah. But I didn't know. He's like... He's just taking it he's all. He's taking in. everything in. And then, like, when I first, when I had my first fight and all that, we went for some food, and he ordered for mine, and I went, how do you know I want that? He went, you remember that, mum? <laughs> he's just fucking taking everything in. Little things like that. Like a sponge that absorbs and everything. And I'm like, fucking hell, I was like, <laughs> ten, <laughs> months, ten months ago, say. So, I can still remember. Uh, he goes, like. That's why I'm here. I'm here to get this bum bum bum. What food's like what? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> so he's, that's why we call him a master. He just knows little little things here. Like, Old school, very. Yeah, and, you know what I mean? That's it. No phones allowed in the gym. No one's allowed in the gym. Now, like, a lot of obviously times have changed in boxing. A lot of gyms are like. Oh, if they're know. in camp or whatever, they yeah. might have a bit of filming or something like that. Or yeah. Well, you're not getting that with him. Get that camera to fuck. That, that's out. I call myself Alex Ferguson. <laughs> a, 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 a boxing. Get that going. George um, Sky wanna come down the gym. They're not coming in this gym. Just stuck, stuck to yeah. his guns, no fucking. Yeah, they're not coming in, yeah. Or my mates got me, like, for instance, my mates drove down George to pick some tickets up from Newcastle. He's gonna come to the gym at 12. Time to come at 2. But he's here, I don't care, time to come at 2. Time to come back. I'll wait in car park. And like, that's. And that's and it's worked. Yeah, yeah. And and the proof's in the pudding it's worked and gyms have changed now where people like the income comes from the the fitness industry. Um but not with him it went. Yeah. Like, and I know what he's done it for nothing. You're gonna laugh at that fucking hell. I was gonna say look the people who don't like the you know the amateur. A, a, a professional trainer gets ten percent. He wouldn't take a pound off yet, so it was mad. That's you, a, had, you had to beg him, you had to post it to him. <laughs> He had to post it in the corner. It just shows you what type of man he was. You know what I mean? Take, that's just unbelievable. Wages, like, George, I, nah, 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 I don't want that. Take your family for the meal. I'm like, you've been up six o'clock in the morning, well, six o'clock every morning with me, back could in the be gym. Could three sessions, could yeah. have three sessions. And at the time, I remember being, I was banned for about, I got banned for about two years driving. He'd pick me up every day, twice a day. Dead pets, I'm like, well, get on with it. I'm like, wow. What a man. So like, I've, I've had like two, and then Danny, for instance, Danny Vaughan, the same, it's, it's the same with George. Yeah. Played the, he's, he's played a massive part, and Danny knows that. Danny's like, he's just a mini version of George. Well, yeah. bi- I want a bigger, yeah, version, yeah. a bigger mini version, but again, another great man, legend, fucking done everything for me. Um, spent a bit of time in Scotland with him and his wife, Sandow, played a massive part in my career, got me back good on. Good people, Good people got yeah. me back on, on part, and so with, I've, I've had a good, I've had a boss career. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I was going to touch on. 2003, you made your debut. Do you remember considering 52 fights you had? Yeah. 52. 52, 52 pro I fights. Said, I said, I put fucking 50 before, but 52. 52. But do you remember your debut? What you yeah, Preston Guild Hall. Preston uh, January Gold. the... Might have been January the 16th. Um, or it might have been later on. But it was definitely January. Michael Jennings, top of the bill. Um, Michael Jennings from Manchester. Yeah, Michael Jennings from Manchester, top of the bill. I think he boxed Bradley Price. I'm not even I'm not yeah. too sure. And I boxed a lad called Sergio Tazimov. Um, at the time, there was no social media, so I didn't know who was. All I knew was that he boxed Peter Koshio, who oh, Georgie okay. had already had. Um, he boxed him. No, he was he boxed Koshio. Fuck now, my ass like that. <laughs> <laughs> he boxed Koshio. you done loads of tickets, loads of people. Yeah, listen, listen. Fuck now, I, I, I don't. Without blowing my own thumb, but I don't think anyone sold tickets the way I sold tickets. Um, I'd sell any, I'd sell anywhere else. Yeah. Anywhere and people. Yeah, they could follow like. I'd, I'd, I'd sell. I, everyone knows that. I'd like. I'd everyone sell, gets behind their own, don't they? Yeah, I'd, I'd sell. I'd, I'd sell anything else. Um, and going back to the the Preston Guild Hall, massive, massive tickets. Um, it's a big place that as well for yeah, your debut, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think I won him. I mean, I was a minute, minute twenty three seconds. Stopped with a body shot. Yeah, Fucking you love them body shots, yeah, didn't I'm, you? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> one and always a pro. Next one. Um, 
And then from there, I box. I think box just Wally, my second fight, when the Ricky Atlund card. So I got on good builds. Yeah. I was I was ABA champion, so I got made a bit of a fuss of. Now there's loads of ABA champions. There's loads of pro boxers. So pro boxer on every corner. Yeah. Every corner you go now, there's a pro boxer. Um, it's most probably harder to get a telly license <laughs> than get a boxing license right now. Um, but but then I was like the ABA champion. Frank Warren made a massive fuss of me. So did Stephen Ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's like Ricky had undercard. I reckon I sold well. Maybe sold a thousand tickets. For your second fight. They weren't going to watch me though, obviously. <laughs> I, I, they were going to watch Atten, but they, got, they had to get the, all the scouts had to get the tickets off me. Yeah. I had certain touts <laughs> in this game, you know what it's like. <laughs> um, I will, can I have 300 tickets off you? There's the cash. Frank Warren's like, that fucking hell. Some tickets selling him. Thousand tickets. I was on five o'clock. No one was even in the venue. Yeah. You were not, 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 not on early. I was on five o'clock. No one was Atten's in the bed. on at ten o'clock yeah. or whatever. But they'd all stay. But according to Frank Warren, I'd done a thousand tickets and then it built from there. And when you've done a thousand tickets, any any promoter's going to yeah. be like, oh, you're the promoter's team. Getting, you're you know promo- what I mean? I've, I've, I've helped you with some shows and if you can't sell tickets, you're, fu- you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah. You're fucked. And I, I know myself through like doing events and stuff. Yeah, you, it's so you, hard. It's, you've got to push it and I know people get a little bit fucking pissed off with it when you put it in. If it's your livelihood or whatever, yeah. and then you're trying to shift tickets. And then I boxed on a couple of Carl's Aggie bills. As yeah. you, you've, yeah. had, you've had Joe on your show. Um, boxed on a couple of his, couple of Atten's. And then Stephen Vaughan started. So my first year, I think he put three on for myself in Everton Park. Um, Steve, big Stephen Vaughan, senior. He put, you went, know what, we'll go to Everton Park. And Everton Park, I love Everton Park. Yeah, yeah. I'm from that area. So I everyone the, come out. I was the new kid on the block. Um and that's where like, I'd sell Everton Park out on a Friday fight night on my own. Remember the Sky, the yeah. Sky on Friday fight these night? Were no, these, these were no, t- no TV was though. Was it on Sky? Was there no Sky no, then? No, no TV. They, they were just putting the shows on for me. I was selling them out. I boss fucking being walks every Then Smigger started coming on and were both popular fights at the time. Yeah. Um, and Paul, great fighter, great, great ticket seller. Um, me and him had fucking, we were, had all, they had Carl Wall on our bill as well. Carl was a great fighter. I want to have bastard. <laughs> um, and it's got Steve Mullen boxed on one. Then Courtney Fry might have early later on as well. But it was some big names there, the whole mates, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was fucking it was brilliant. That Everton Park Sports Centre for us, like from that area, selling at the top of the bill. Even in a six rounder. I'm only I'm doing a six round <laughs> fight, but at the top of the bill. Um and it's a mad story about it. I boxed so there was no social media. I didn't know what box rec was. No one. Really yeah, yeah. So you just had a list of names. George used to have a book and say, right, we're gonna fight him. We're gonna fight him. He, knew, he had the he had the program for me. He, had, he knew where I was where going. He, to see yeah, he knows whatever. where I was going, and he always says, why go that way when you can go the long way round? You're still gonna get there, and you're gonna yeah. earn more money going the long way round. Believe it or not, why rush? Go the long way round. Still, stay, it might take an extra two years, but so what? Um, and I'm boxing a lad, thirteen and all. Marty Case. It was about me, had to be my six fights or something. Um, Irish fella, little fucking ballsy fella. Still speak to him now, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, he's still fighting. He's, yeah. still, he's still fighting. Um, so, listen, I fucking bladdered him the first round. I thought he's not 13, and I mean bladdered him. <laughs> Second round, bladdered him. He never come out then. He's calling up the. Yeah, he's just. The, so I'm on the ropes, ah, fucking going Evan mad. Park, sort of sold it out, well, going nuts. And every, sold it, yeah. Fucking George, went, you soft bastards. I went, what's up? He went, he's over 13. He hasn't won. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you told me he was 13, and now he went, he hasn't fucking won. Oh, no. I've been telling all the lads, he's fucking 13, and all. I'm like, you fucking hell. I've been telling all I'm like, I'm 18. Did the lads know now to take this time? I'm 18, telling all the birds and all the by heart, fucking the kid there, 13, and all. I'm, I'm flying made up. <laughs> and then, fuck, it's so all like, wow. There's little things like that, yeah. they, they stick with you. Yeah. They, they like, Things won't, won't leave me, little, and I, I, I try and black our fights as little copy yeah. George in a way. Is what he's put on due to the experience or whatever you you're passing. Yeah, like like going with that food one. What I said earlier yeah. on, I I I, try, I need to know my fighters what what they like. Yeah. What food they like? It's not worth taking them for the steak if you don't like steak. 
So you play a yeah, yeah. You, play an old you, fighter. Want to, you don't want to know the ins and outs of yeah. them, don't you? And yeah, it can be a great coach, but it's a meant it's heavy. A boxing coach is not just someone who holds pads. Yeah, George never. He can conf- no, yeah. just trust the trust things a yeah. bit thing. You know, you know all the ins and outs yeah. of like, the diets and stuff yeah, like, like that. You see loads of both pads, man. Pads don't it back. It's how people speak to people. George on the bag might like, twist that way, do this, but that's a coach. You're leaving your guard, this, yeah. that, you know. That's a coach. It's just, sometimes not, being truthful, I mean, being honest with, yeah. with your fighters and some. Oh, I'm not a coach yeah. or whatever, but I, I see like sometimes people can blow smoke up the backside and you, you've got to be honest with people you don't want to be putting them in if they're going to get fucking blown exactly. away or exactly. get hit you've, you've got to know the right you've got to know everything develop Where, them right yeah develop, develop them right know what they want and know their capability and where they can go in life what they what what they what they want to achieve or get them to achieve it because yeah. some people do overachieve now I, I always said I thought I overachieved but a lot of people said I think you're underachieved so yeah. it's a bit of, it's a bit of give and take. Yeah. Um so it's a, it's a hard one. I like I always say I, I think I overachieved in the sport. I'm not gonna blank sit here and say I should have done this, I should have done that. I thought I'd done okay. Yeah. Um I'd be fight I'd be great fighters. I've got beat by I mean, some big Well that, that was that was my next question. I've got a you know, what fight stands out for you? And that was an all out war. That what in, in your professional career? I know you've been in some well, you've been in some tough tough fights where it was yeah. like well I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm like name a little few now say so let's say some champions Steve Foster Jr Tommy Coyle yeah these are champions of boxed Steve Foster Jr Tommy Coyle John Simpson from Scotland at the time was British champion I was WBU world champion after boxing I had to box a British champion I couldn't box Mickey Mouse from wherever, do you know what I mean? So then, it was fights that you never yeah, didn't turn go, down, I'm not. Chewy twice, um, Scott Lawton twice, Luke Campbell, Awara Davies. There's nearly a dozen Ga- fights. Gavin Reese twice, Anthony Crawler twice. There's more. Say, uh, Emilio Marsili, he's fighting for the, the European title, still going now. Um, um, Amir Unsworth. From Warrington, boxed in for the English title, good good fighter, army man. Um, Stephen Jennings from Kirby Liverpool, boxed yeah. in for the title. So I've always boxed. Proper you've fights. You've never liked. I didn't want to. The I, easy route where yeah. you can. But I think I, I got sort of a padded record earlier on yeah. when I was, cause, but I was young, so I was learning on the job. Um, them uh, fights that you've named there, don't yeah, you yeah, could have shied away what? from them or... If I've missed anyone else, I'm sorry, because there's, there's, <laughs> there's most of the lads who have, who have think, why aren't I on that list? But there's, there's been loads, like really, really loads who all good fighters, um, sparred some of the best in the world as well, and it's been good. Who was um, who do you regret not fighting, or a fight that you never took, that you should have been offered? I got offered it, and I went with me mate, um, Who's, who's now Matt big in boxing? Um, Stephen Vaughan Junior, who's come back into the into the sport. Who's got a European champion, Commonwealth champion. He's doing doing well with Conor Butler. He right train Stephen manages him and, and promotes him. I went and met Dean Powell, the late Dean Powell, who passed oh, yeah. away. Yeah, um, I'd just come back from a from a. I had two years out of the game. I stuck quit. I retired at twenty six, twenty five. Said that's him done. Come back, had a couple of wins. Went and met Dean Powell with Stephen Vaughan, and he went. There's a deal to fight Kevin Mitchell. I went, okay. What am I getting paid? I was champion. What am I getting paid? You're the A side. Yeah, so I just started laughing at him. I said, fucking hell. Put times that by 10 or at least 20. <coughs> he went, oh, oh, sorry, 20 or at least 10. And he went, well, I went, times that. Even Stevens. We just started laughing. Fuck, I'm joking. Just, did you just think you were going to fucking sign yeah. it? Like... He went, no, you'd be like, I don't care. I want to earn some fucking job. You're the champion. Yeah. I want. I want and champions. It was only league. like a small belt, but Kevin Mitchell was some fighter. Yeah, yeah, some fighter, mate. Mass and John Murray as well from Manchester. Mm. They're the two who never boxed. They, we were all around in the same era, and they, we never boxed each other. Um, they, they didn't. They boxed each they other. They boxed each other. I remember. Yeah, I'm Echo. I remember that. They boxed each other at the Echo. Did, did Mitchell beat him? Yeah, Mitchell stopped him. I think six rounds. Think. Yeah, and you were all the same. What's yeah, and I never got to box them. Yeah, and you wish you'd, you yeah me and Kev see each other now on the amateur circle yeah, we, we're yeah. always together um, 
Ja, we zijn wel af. We hebben ja, zo'n great spaas. Ik was voor zo'n fighter. Ja, ja. Zo'n fighter. Zo'n past. Oh, ja. Past. Ik was nog een kid zout at 12. Ja. Fast asleep. One hard fella. Weet je. Zo, I'm a bit lucky and never got to it. <laughs> But that would have been a great fight. Um, he, was, he was good. He was very, very good. And, he went, and John Murray. John Murray's the same. Yeah. Another hard fucker. One, like, one real hard. Well respected than yeah. John Murray. And They're uh, both great lads. Yeah, listen. yeah. Um, I don't think there's any bad boxers, if I'm honest. In boxing, there's a, you know, I know sometimes you've got a, but a lot of majority of boxers, yeah. they're all real people, and that you know what, it, it's to get in the ring and fucking and have a go there. You know what I mean? It's it's a tough. It's like it's like a while of Davis. Me and him had some, <laughs> we had some fucking some stick. Yeah, uh, some banter. But I mean, banter. It got got a bit out of hand. It did, yeah, yeah. I remember it. Banter. I remember him walking and he, well, he gave me some shit on Twitter and. Did he come to Liverpool? Yeah, he came to Liverpool. I said, I want to get him. I said, as soon as he, as soon as he walks in this hotel, I want to get him. And I want to strangle him. Um, so I, I want to call up the press conference, I and Bellew. I want to come upstairs. And I knew he was on his way. Um, so I got there about half an hour earlier. I just sat on the chair on my own. In the hill? Yeah, was yeah, in the hill. I thought, I want no one here. I don't need anyone. Um, I just want to see what he's got to say. So he, as he's walked in, I just fucking flew at him. On my own. No one with me. Mm. And so I just tried to get out of him, told him shots at him. Um, and he's going, come on, we get paid for this. And then later on in the press conference, he was going like, you've just tried to attack me and all that. And I went, yeah, because you can't call me what you were calling me or calling people of our city. Yeah, yeah. On social media and expect me not to not to do anything. I said, I'm a human being, mate. You can't. You're provoking yeah. me and some of the stuff. Yeah, I remember. And I, yeah. I mean, I'm just sitting here talking, just talking, oh, I'm not having this fucking now. I mean, <laughs> Even though you're a pro boxer, yeah, you but, but your head yeah, gone, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just wanted to like, I know why he's a lovely fella, you know. Do you know what? I was about to say, I seen an interview, I seen him last, I seen an interview a couple of weeks ago with him and Eddie Ann, and he wanted to pull Eddie over, like, yeah. for years they've not spoken to, because I think it was after that fight, after your fight, was that my match in for Jim, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, what happened? Oh, oh, he's done something about the hills, but. Yeah, he mentioned. And he hasn't got a clue about it, and I'm going to stick up for him. He hasn't got a clue. He's not a football man. He said, I don't know. I, I got told to say it. Yeah. And do you know what? I think he's that type of player. Uh, you know, I think Lee, he Lee yeah. represents, you know, Lee, yeah, don't yeah. you? Good lad from down south, Lee. Like, he, he, uh, he represents him now. And, and do you know what? Watching the interview, and he said, he says on the interview, like, he didn't, he didn't mean to say what he said. He didn't understand it. And I was a bit like that, thinking, fucking yeah. disaster, what happened at Hillsbridge? Yeah. You know, everyone, you know, whether you were. You know, at that age where you could understand, but if he's been told to say it by people who are around him, they're not nice. He, he you know told what I mean? It's not nice thing to say. The fight was going to sell anyway. A and Bellew sold itself. Yeah, yeah. He didn't need to, to just say whatever he said, but I don't think he said it to me. I don't, I don't, he said it, obviously, yeah. but I don't think he, he knew someone's what he was saying. Someone's pushed yeah. him and, he's, yeah. a, and he's a good fella. And yeah. I spoke to him since, met him, had a conversation with him. Um, I think he's just been offered an opportunity to fight. He's fighting for the world title. Yeah, I hope yeah. he wins it. Yeah. I hope he wins it. He's, he's heavy handed, mate, isn't he? Well, tell me about it. I've got a red eye. Oh, can I can punch? Yeah. And I, punch. I, I think you say there, he's a. Uh, I, I listen, at the time I was a bit like, fucking hell, it's a bit naughty, that what he said. But like you say, I think he's uh, he, he's probably been advised by whoever's. Yeah. He, and he's massive as well, so massive. He looks, he looks like he... So I, I knew to start with for that fight. Um, I went and when I watched the fight, Daddy, I was thinking, how is he the fucking same way? So, so I used to like, we have a day before weighing. Uh, so when I used to make lightweight, which is nine stone nine, I'd put 18 pounds on overnight, automatically. And my body was depleted from mm. fluids and food and all that. And I'd put 18 pounds on. So I always had an advantage. I was massive compared to everyone. Yeah. Um, and I could whack, I can punch, um, but I can punch a nine stone mm. nine. <laughs> and then I remember getting away in for a while at Davies, and I was well bigger than him. And I mean, fucking, I'm fucking I'm massive. I said, you're, I said, you're in trouble tomorrow, you're fucking tiny. You are tiny, you just start to laugh. Like, I went, you're, you're, I went to Danny, he's fucking tiny, I'm well bigger than him, I'm fucking, mm. but I was pumped. That's the heaviest I've ever been, like, of a table fight, mm. uh, day of the way. The next day, I never put no weight on, because I, I hadn't depleted myself, I didn't have to. 
I reckon I put about four pounds on. Mate, he got in the bin and I just went, what the fuck? <laughs> he, he put the 18 pounds on. He might have put more on. I reckon he put over 20 pounds. He was massive. I just went, fucking hell. Like, he was trying to pump. Someone like, from yesterday, how the fuck yeah. do you like that today? Like, someone had pumped him up, but then I knew. That's what people had done. That's what I had done to people. I used to get to the scales. I couldn't walk to the scales sometimes. Was you that fucking oh, I was, I was in, trained or? Yeah, I was in bats boiling, boiling my body down. The things you've got to do as a pro yeah. boxer, though. I've missed a fight off from before, Stephen Ormond, because that's just the bat just reminds me. I tried to get two, couldn't get two ounces off in a bat. I was trying to get two when I boxed Stephen Ormond. You've done the weigh in and you have to try No, so for the, going back previously to the fights, the list of fighters, mm-hmm. I boxed Stephen Ormond. Um, I remember getting the open for the Czech weigh 20 minutes, half an hour before the weigh got on the scales, stepped off, bollocko, two ounces, go upstairs in a red hot bat. Danny's rubbed me with a towel. Wouldn't come off. Two ounces. Oh, fucking. And it's a spit, isn't it? But I couldn't even spit. Go like, I got it off in the end. Fucking just red hot bats. So people don't see that side. That's that's it's crazy how you've got to like to make weight. The st- yeah. what you've got to put your body through. Yeah, it's just it's, it's, it's scary. But he's another fighter who missed off. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Very good fighter. There's loads. There's fucking. Well, you four fifty. You had fifty two pro fights. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, um, I, I, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. What was um. Obviously, friends you became very close with after sharing them in with majority of them all. Yeah, even going back to the amateur days, uh, Martin Stead, who's an England roommate, boxed each other six times. He's now head army coach. I see him on the amateur circle. We, we text each other every now and again. Good friends with him. Nick MacDonald, boxer of West Widow. Unbelievable fighter. Most probably one of the most gifted fighters this city, well, I know from, I know he's from the water, but he's, he's the city, the city's had. Uh, Georgie Treble trained him, unbelievable fighter. Um, is I he won- still involved in boxing? Is no, he? I, I, I don't know whether he's coaching, but I, I won the first one. He won the next four. Then I won the last two, so he's winning four three. <laughs> um, <laughs> so little things like that stick because you, you can't you competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he was a great fighter. Well, honest, what I think everyone in the city knows. Out of anyone, he, he should have done better than, than everyone. Yeah. Because he was yeah, he was brilliant, honest. And did he just not make it to the? No, as a he just he turned pro, but he weren't the best pro, it's which weird. was mad. Because he was like a man at a young age. He he, he yeah. mature, yeah. He was like the way the way Rooney was. No, was a, as a kid, but yeah, he was a yeah, man. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. he was like, he was he was shit hot. Um, and then going back, obviously, who have boxed Tommy Coyle. Yeah. Very close pals. Um. He's a great lad, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good lad, Tommy. He's, he's, you can't, you cannot not like him. He's a funny guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. He's became very good friends yeah. and stuff like and that. Collar, and he Collar. Collar, uh, yeah. Another good fella, great fella. Um, I think everyone you box, you become no. You're gonna laugh your head off, Chui. Remember Chui? Yeah, the, the what's the Chinese guy was the, it? the Mongolian fella. Mongol, was he Mongolian? Right, so. I might FaceTime him in a minute. He FaceTime me every every day, every day, every other day. We just have a laugh. Um, but he's out, he's out in Mongolia. So we, we that's like, he beat me for the world title. He, he took my world title off me, and then I beat him in prize fighter. Yeah. But like, me and him have come. It's weird. Isn't it? It's mad, isn't it? We've, we've, we've got fighter the year. We've got we fucking battered. Well, the first fight he fucking battered me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one, we battered each other. Got got voted fighter the year. Um, got round of the year on a certain round. But we've become mates. We've, 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 it's we've, good dog and innocent. Yeah, and then. It's it's weird, Tommy and Tommy Coyle. Tommy, listen, he's he's a proper man, Tommy. Yeah, proper man. And a, a little thing sticks out with me with him when I boxed him and all. He's a master. He's like a god, you know. He's like yeah, he's he's, he's, like, he's like the Beckham, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. like the Beckham of all. Um, and the way he was outside roasting hot day, box day, and then I went backstage and getting getting changed. And I'll never forget this day, you know. It's just it's dad. I didn't know it was his dad at the time. Yeah, yeah. His dad come up to me and. Went, Best of luck tomorrow, mate. Shook my hands. Wish you luck. Stay safe. I went, thanks very much, mate. I appreciate that. But he's from home, I mean. He went, you don't know why I'm doing I went, no, he went, I'm Tommy's dad. And from that day, I knew, know what, this, this kid's from good stock. Yeah, his family's good. Yeah, he's from, he's from good, good stock. Yeah. A good sport and family. His dad was the bodybuilder. Blood the place, football. Football, golf. His dad had the yeah. fruit and veg. Yeah, his dad was a bodybuilder. Yeah. And they're, they're from, he's from good stock, mate. Um, and then I knew, right away, I said he's from, he's from good stock then. Yes, and we boxed. 
I don't think what a fucking fight that was, mate. They, they sold what was the rugby ground? We sold the rugby ground. Oh, Kingston Rose was yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know what. Didn't know what yeah, ground yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, that last round, yeah. when you just fucking. I had to uh, listen. I hadn't won, a, and I think. What was you when you coming out? Because I know he was fucking like. He, he, I never won around. So he, he was fucking just. He was a young, fresh kid. Boom, boom, boom. But he was giving you some shots, yeah. but you wouldn't. You wouldn't. What's the name of that? In, in that last round, mate, when he had you on the ropes, and you just threw that. Him, yeah. Oh, mate. So going back to the the fight and the press conferences and all that leading up to it, I said I'm gonna knock you out with a left hook. Is that what you said to him on yeah. the, when you all, all two the builds up? I want to knock you out with a left hook. Danny Vaughan told me, it's like the qualify fight, when, he, when I stopped Crawler. Yeah. Danny said, you're going to knock him out with an uppercut. Double uppercut, boom, boom. And you watch it, it lands. <laughs> and like, so it's Dan, signs of perfection. Yeah, Dan, remember, yeah. Dan, Dan, Danny knew, tactics-wise, he's fucking man master at them. Unbelievable on the pad, tactic, genius. You'll watch your face yeah, and you're fighting. Yeah, he knows, you're a shot up. Yeah, yeah. Boom. And he, um, so Dan, I said to Tommy, I'm going to knock you out with a left hook. Anyway, only it was Danny in my corner. If I had to be a bit of someone else, did they pull me out? Yeah. I, st- I stayed, because I was taking a bit of a beating. Did you fucking hell, yeah. He was f- the referee was looking at me and everything. And, I, and Danny knew how, how, how much I could fight and how, 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 how much he could go. And how much I could punch. I was like, I bet anyone on the chin, they're going to kill. Mm. Um, and I think that that round, I'm sure Danny must have said, so you've got to pull it out now. You need to pull this out. This is your last chance. This is your last round. Boom. And uh, fucking hell. I know what I never even got I've watched it back right I never had a mark on my, on my eyes here my eyelids and as he's fallen his elbow hits me and ends up with a big you know, 10 stitches in the eye because of his elbow knocked him out and then from that fight mate we got sportsmanship of the year went down to London um, the same year I won fight of the year with Collar me and Collar it's boxing board of control we got fight of the year I won fight of the year sportsmanship of the year with them and to be honest, they don't yeah, like you know I mean? and even like going back to winning honors. Um, I remember getting voted Young Boxing Writers Award, and I've got the list in the I've got a what's well, been framed in my mum's some like, names uh, on it, yeah. There. Nazim's on it, um, Nazim Hatton, all superstars. Ben, I think Ben might have been on it, but you've got to be under 21 to win it. Or under like twenty two, whatever. Three names you just yeah, mentioned. Young, young boxing writers award, and, and I'm on Carl's Haggis on it. Um, I think that, there's one for, other fella from Liverpool. I think it was, I'm sure it was Keith Wallace. There's another scout who's won it. There's only me and him who's won it. Yeah. Um, so that was a massive achievement as well. As well with, with the other honours of one. Fucking hell, mate. Also, Daddy, um, you know, Daddy's ABC gym has over fifty fighters fighting out of it. Is it more? Some more, some go on that must have some team. You must have some team working for you for the same. Yeah, listen, is it 50 fighters you Yeah, but we could have more. You come and go. Um, some boxers now fucking hell have more clubs than Tiger Woods. They come and go. It's mad. It's, fuck, <laughs> it's mad, so it's mad. They get beat, they'll go in. His mum wants him to go and box there. It's yeah. like the old days. I seen like the presentation you done the other day, yeah. and it was over like 50. 50 awards that we're going to be given. Yeah, that's, that's some good There's that even, means. there could be more, you know what I mean? We've got, listen, we've got, and there's no special treatment in our gym. You didn't. No, no, I can, yeah. You didn't, no, that's it. I've got, Work hard and I've got the sort of, because I've been from, I've, I always state that I'm from the best amateur club in the country. I'm yeah. from the Solly. If I bleed, I bleed black blood. That's why I've got black blood, I've got no red blood. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Solly man. And yeah. that, I always say it to everyone. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've, um, even Mick Jenner, who's, who's our coach with us, um, and the other coach, but Mick's a massive, he's like, I call him the head coach. Yeah. Because he's the, he's, a, he's the brains, he's the master. Like his coaching skills are unbelievable. How he speaks to people, he knows. And he boxes the solid with me. So we've got that installed, but I've also took the Georgie Bourne thing, where, no, nope, obviously you can't have parents in the gym anyway, in an amateur yeah. club, but we're strict. We're not, here to, we're not a youth club. We're here, you're here to box. If you don't like it, fuck off. There's the door. That's how it is. There's the door. There's the, and I always say when as soon as the kids walk in, got your gum shield? No, go on. You wouldn't go to a footy match without your boots. Footy boots, yeah. Go on. <coughs> we do it for pennies. They don't pay well, they pay subs, but it's, it's nothing. We're not here to keep you fit. We want to make you a champion. We want to change your life. Um, yeah, kids off the streets yeah, as well. Yeah. So over Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have our elite squadron. 
all our main fighters Tuesday, Thursday it's a bit of beginners and then we fil- they filter into the main group if they're good enough yeah yeah um, they'll attend sessions yeah, and you'll see you yeah, know. It, might, it might take two years so yeah, yeah, it just yeah. depends on who, who's what level committed and, and, and whatever also we, we do it where how do you want to say like if you're missing that Monday, Wednesday, Friday group go on the Tuesday, Thursday group we're not here to be honest the first couple of seasons we had everyone in because we were new we were brand new everyone's coming and we're like fucking hell this is brilliant this blah 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 now Nah, now we're on it. Now we know. We know. Me and our coaches, me, Jeno, John, Jim, Dawn, we know that where we've got to go in life with our kids, where we're going to take them, who's who's available to do that, who's available to do that. So it's not just me, but we're, we're a team. You've got a good team. We're a team, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's no, there's no special treatment. We are what we are. And a lot of clubs like us, they invite us to shows, we invite people to shows, and we're giving our kids an experience what... What well, you most probably wouldn't get. You know, that's but that's good, like I say, the community spirit as well. That's what you know, you're helping kids who are on the streets, who are doing like like in all walks of life, go get up to no good and you know, looking after themselves, they can handle themselves, but also the discipline and stuff, because in boxing you need all yeah, that. Yeah, and the, we, we I like look, if one of our kids is uh, I'll use it again, he's just got a, one of our coaches just give him a job. Um all the kids in the gym, he needs a job, I'll find him a job. Opportunities yeah, there. I'll, I'll find him a job. I'll know. So if he wants, fucking, to, if he wants to be a painter, I'll, I'll know. So I'll be one of the lads. Give him a job, mate. He'd owe me a favour. Give him a job. Or, or, but uh, they're bending on for him because they can see that oh he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's got potential. And you can see in the gym that he's, discipline. he's not a fucking a little rag ass. Yeah, 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 he's grafting yeah, yeah. or yeah. doing something, you know, because otherwise, I know you probably wouldn't have it in the gym anyway. No. You'd probably pull him to one side. Like I said, I was speaking to John. We had John Edgeon from Elwood and he was the same. He said, listen, you know, if there's any fucking about or whatever, and I think that's what happens in most gyms. Any fucking about yeah, is the got, door. It's like, I'll just say, it. so I feel like I owe boxing something, but I owe the people something at the same time, because boxing has been good to me. Mm. Um, and I've met great people. So I'll go back to Tony Chandler, yeah. Alan Lynch, Jimmy Carroll, Franny Smith, all, all the coaches, Paul Lawson, Jimmy Carroll, all the coaches, Solly, Simon Clay, they're all like, they all done something for me. They played a massive part of my yeah. career as an amateur. Took me all over the country, everywhere. I, I never, <laughs> I stayed off school. I never went to school. I just, I was all over the country <laughs> at shows. Boom, boom, boom. Didn't pay for anything. Got everything paid. No, just like, it was boss. But all that you've learnt off them. Now you're. I, I'm doing it now with our kids. With the kids and yeah, that, yeah, and yeah. The same with George with the pros. That's like we doing this. I'm doing exactly the same, and that's how because I've learned from the best. No, that's a, that's that's great. That you can obviously you can pass that down to the kids, and I think having that good team behind, just like you say, you, you know, you can't do it on your own. It'd be impossible to do it. Yeah, it's and the yeah. fucking you know, I can see I see the gym on social media and stuff, and you know, shows and stuff like that. It's good to see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Want to touch on what you do in the community and helping people. Oh yeah. Like, so yeah, uh, Daddy, just want to touch on what you do in the community and helping people less fortunate. Always see yourself always helping others. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to saying that I owe I owe boxing something, um, and I like giving back. Um, I help anyone. Mm. That's the way I'm. I'm one of them guys who I'm no different from anyone else. We do a lot of community work, a lot of a lot of charity work. Um, I just like giving back to people. Is that is that something from being like off a of council estates and stuff like that? I I'm a bit I'm I'm a bit the same way. Like don't I've got much, but what I do have is a if I see someone that's fortunate or whatever, or we try and do like, you know, like the food bank and stuff like that. Yeah. So many people like struggle with it. And I know a lot of people don't like speaking out because they feel embarrassed and stuff like that. But I always see the likes of yourself doing stuff for charities and, you know, people in your local area all the time. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's not so much a giving them something. So it's giving them your time. Yeah. I think time, time's more important for me. Um, to go to speak to someone people who are struggling, go and have a chat with them, take them for the coffee, um, let them speak, you know, if someone says to me, lads, I think he's struggling there, give me his number, I won't see him, or, or whatever, and yeah. a lot of people don't see that side of me, where I do a lot, but I don't, you don't, don't publish that, yeah, yeah, no, to, yeah, I, no, I, no, I, that's... I don't want anyone to know, it's a, it, it's a private thing, yeah, um, I run a couple of sessions, mental health sessions, um, I work with New Beginnings, it was a, a massive company, who help, help hundreds of people in Liverpool, and in the northwest, um, Maverick Stars as well from from Manchester, Charlotte from Manchester. 
massive. Um, there's a lot of things. Everything for commu- everything for charity, community. Yeah. Everything. I run a couple of projects for there, and I work with a couple of recovery houses where getting getting them on the state and narrowing. I love doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I love giving back. Well, there's other things where like I go for walks with people and talk. Don't get paid. It's a voluntary. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a voluntary. But just even doing that though, Danny, yeah. that person could be in a fucking hole. Yeah. They just don't know where to turn. Yeah, and man. But I, I, like someone said, you're doing too much. You're like, I'm not doing too much. I'm okay. My missus says the same yeah. to me. You're doing too much. I'm a million miles an hour. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm, I'm going to get up at four o'clock every day, Tom. Every day, four o'clock. Well, I'm out the house for what? Uh, and you're probably not into about fucking 10, 11 o'clock at night or something. Yeah, that, could be in, that could be in Yorkshire on a Wednesday night. We've got a kid boxing, three two minute rounds. We'll get on till two in the morning. Two hours kip. It's just, that's just, I love that. Do you know what I mean? You just keep an active Yeah, and just... I, I like. I like what was I gonna say? I like um, helping people, but not everything has to be. Yeah, no, you're right. I think sometimes I just see you're gonna laugh your head off. I see people giving people money in the and it's video on it. What the fuck's that about? Listen, I just it's like you What's know, you see, my, my, my missus. This is this is a god's on a suit. This you probably won't like me saying this, but my missus, like say for instance, we go to town and we go shopping or whatever, or even like on a night out or something. Every every person, like, you know, she's giving them a five or a ten yeah. and, and she's like, that person, you know, I, I oh she, she get yourself a coffee, mate, or get yourself a, and I mean Mrs. is like, do you know what that that'll get them a bit of food or whatever. You don't need to publicise it, you don't need to no, do you know what no, I mean? No, it's the same. No you probably hate me saying it, but Jazza. I've walked through time with Jazza, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but Jazz, stop it. <laughs> Just like that, fellas. Yeah, I make this funny. He went, they need it there. I'm okay. I don't know what. Good on you, lad. That, it's just, do you know it's what? Opinion, it's not, it? Yeah, it is in you. And you know, it's whether it be your upbringing or whatever experience you've had, it's, you know, or I think sometimes giving back, you t- not that you've got much or whatever, but what you have got, you'll share it about, you know what I mean? It's just. There's enough for everyone. Of course there is, of course there is, yeah. There's enough for everyone. And people who, who, who've had different experiences and, you know, in their life, you don't, you don't, you never look down on no one. Unless you're helping them up. Exactly. That's, that's a, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I always exactly, say that, you exactly. know what I mean? And I always stop and talk to people. Hey, you know, not now, but early on in my career. Yeah, yeah. Can I have a photo of it? Yeah, of course you yeah. can. Yeah. Of course you can. I'll, I'll use that other, thing. for instance, I was boxing in the Echo Arena, I was top of the bill. And I used to like walking over myself, me. Yeah. I let the team go over. I like, I like my own, I'm, 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 people call me a weirdo, but I like my own space. Um, I'd have me hood up. I had me hood up one day, and I, oh, man and woman. Stop, Jen. Yeah. No, they were, listen, they were walking over the, the arena to watch me. They didn't even know me. <laughs> they didn't know I was talking to them. So I've got me hood up with things. <laughs> and I go, well, I think it might have been even raining. Well, are you okay? Well, yeah. Going to boxing, yeah, yeah. Going, I can't wait for this and all that. I went, where are you sitting? You know, well, I went on the thing on here. And I went, come here a minute. Put me hood down. Took them to, I never, I took them to the desk. And I put them ringside on me. And they were like, fuck it, that's Terry. <laughs> Terry, I'm going to put them ringside on me. Just to genuinely, and I still speak to them now. That's and the friends of Martin Murray as well. Yeah. Come see Martin a lot. Um, they travel around the gyms. And from that day, they started to travel, well, not just me, but they'd go around all the gyms around the country, all over the world. Boxing, f- boxing fans, probably just walking over. Hold up. It's great that though, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, just... it's great to see all that. That generation going to boxing. And they're coming to support Yeah, you go, oh, I don't want to watch the boxing. You know, Daddy's top of the bill and all that. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I put me down and come on. What the fuck? When, when, when you go in there, in, in the Echo Arena, there's a ramp down the back. And it's Frank Warren's office. I always had a great relationship with, with all, all the team. I found Frank Warren's office. I could have as many tickets as I wanted. They were, they were fucking brilliant with me. Yeah, yeah. Was, Frank Warren was fucking... Over the moon with you. And, 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 I, and I, still, I still think he's the best. I know Eddie Ernst coming into the game, yeah. but I've always worked close with Frank. Um, so I went down the ramp with, the, with this couple, make sure they're front row, make sure they're inside on me. I'm top of the bill, I can control them. Yeah, you can I had a bit of pull, and this man and woman were sitting there. It's like, the fucking tickets, mate, they might have been in the oh, gods or whatever. They might have been able to see. And like, so little things like that, that's like. But proper. do you know what? That, that's that's, so that's why I used to just walk over on my own, hold up. But everyone goes, fuck. Yeah, come on, we're going with yeah, yeah. Would you let Would you let your team go? Yeah, they get shuffled over sometimes, or uh, yeah, depending on where the hotel yeah, was. Uh, my team were like, we like to do our own thing. 
Do you know what I mean? We're like, we don't want all that fancy Entourage and all that. Danny and I come behind us all that. Yeah. I don't know if he's auntie. Just walk to the arena. Just walk. <laughs> just why do you want to get a car over? Just walk to the arena. Yeah. And I, I used to go and I used to... Because that, I think that we might have had someone else on earlier. Um, and so you go to watch yeah. them, yeah. So I went up there, it's already gone, so I just walked over on my own. And I always done that. And that's just... So it's like I go to, used to go to Wayans and press conference on my own. <laughs> so, well, not on my own, but I mean, I meet people there or... The team, Danny and yeah. all that, and I'd go, I'd have a press conference on my own. I'm, I'm walking on my own, on my own. I see anyone seen the team. Just, <laughs> but he's normally used to talk all, up yeah, together, yeah, but that's just your way of being. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, a lot of people feel like, uh, might, might think that they need the team around to protect them. But I know my team would have my back more than anyone. Yeah, I, yeah. Had the, I had the best team in the world from day one. I wouldn't, and that's just the way it was. And I knew when I needed them, I needed them. Um, and, that's just that's just the way I was. I was like, I mean, but everybody's different, aren't yeah. they? In the fight game, do you know what I yeah, mean? Ed, yeah, everyone, everyone, like, just all the loudest man in the room. It's that saying, isn't it? Yeah, the quietest man in the room is the powerful man in the room. Is I always saying. say this: the quiet ones are always the quiet the ones, most dangerous, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Fucking right. Silence assassin, yeah, like yeah, you say. Just, just be quiet. Why, why, why do you want anyone to know where you are? It's like when I go to uh, go again, going, going up. Like when I was uh, at the peak of my career. I never like went anywhere. You didn't know. I, I went out. Yeah, went yeah. Up, but yeah. I put like put me in the corner somewhere. Don't want anyone to know. Yeah, you just. Bit weird, but that's it. Don't get it. And I and I'd rather sit in a pub than a club, or I'd rather sit in a restaurant. With people, with, with people bastards, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like to eat. Yeah. So I was making weight all the time, so I'd eat, and that's just the way of. Of well, everyone's different, aren't they? Yeah, and that's why I always say I'm from I'm from good stock. I think we won't do a great job. And, and it's it's it, you know you've carried it through life that you know, you know what I mean you've not you don't, you don't seem to have changed that you know I've known you for a number of years and you've never really been one up your own ass if I'm gonna be honest if I'm, I had mate no why I had mates did well that's that I spoke to spoke to somebody else you know who we had on the podcast recently mm. and we said to them you don't forget it because your mates knock you down you're gonna be big for your business who the fuck do you think you are do you know? I know for a fact if my, my ma, mate oh, my mate you know if I bought a nice car. What are you doing? My man, what the fuck are you doing, lad? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Obviously. You're spending all that money on whatever yeah. and, and yes, stuff. Yeah. But like you say, you've got good people around. And that's, I think in any sport or whatever or in any profession that you do, you know, if you do well for yourself, you've got to have good, you've got to have good people around is it, is you. It, listen, and again, like, when I was in camp, I was strict in camp. Strict. Where I had, you, know, you, you, you know Bob, Big yeah. Bob, he done all my tickets for me. <laughs> he'd, he'd or a lash out of the gym. They'd done me tickets. Like, Ash and Bob, yeah. yeah. They 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 let me get on with my career. They let me box. But you need all that as you well. Need you don't need that distraction. I had the best group of mates. Yeah, yeah. And I, other fighters are gonna say they had the best. If I went into, into a pub or they see me drinking a can of coke, Tim, what, what the doing? fuck are you doing? Or did Vin George <laughs> and blow it up? Yeah. <laughs> did Vin George and that's just because they're looking out for you. And, and I, I think I got a lot. I had to get a long career because of them. Where mm. they could just say, come on, lads. I'm going on Aldi. I've got money. I'm fighting. I'm fucking, I've got a few quid. Mm. I've got what I want. I can buy what I want. Let's go. They're like, nah, you're not, lads. We spend, and I, and I always say, they spent their money to come and watch me. They had to work all week on a building site or in the office. So, a bit disrespectful for me going yeah. partying and then uh, boxing a week later. So, I, I never done it. It's just good. It's good that you got that type of people. I've got good, uh, good people and, and Bob. I remember the day I retired. <laughs> I remember when I boxed the Warren Davies. Went back in the changing rooms at the time. Me, me missus at the time was pregnant with my little girl, um, and I just went. I'm done. I'm done. I'll never put a pair of gloves on again. And I, and I haven't. Um, I haven't even missed a bag. <laughs> I went. I'm done. I'll, I'm, did you just know that he was there? I was in relief. Listen, I, to be honest, Danny Vaughan, we said it at the same time, Danny Vaughan, you're done. But I went, yeah. I know what I went, thank fuck for that. Because, yeah, just a relief. Just like, yeah, I'm done. That's, I'm, I'm, so then, I was in the O2 Arena. We stayed in the Continental, all my mates, again, wherever I boxed. We had our own after party. So we, we had our own after party <laughs> in that hotel. They must have been, there's a picture of us. And it's just all, all our boys, just... Everyone who came to And all the boys, and, and some of them brought the missus with us, they're all in one room, my cousins, everyone. It was fuck. 
and I went and done, you know, and he was all, I know the old, they were all celebrating. They were made up. Yes. 52 fucking yeah. fights. They were like, do you know what I mean? Yes, where other lads, other boxers have got mates going, oh, have one more, have one more, and Big Bob says, if I ever seen you walk in the ring, I'd hit you with a chair over the head <laughs> so you wouldn't get in. <laughs> he still says it now. And that's what you need. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, Teddy, obviously you had a good following, um, a lot of good people following you, home and away and whatever. Um, service stations, like, fuck it. <laughs> where do we start? <laughs> as, as I stated back on, so early on in the, in the, in the chat that I had a massive following, no matter where, where I boxed. For some reason, I had more fans who wanted to go away than stay at home. It's like, it's like football, like you want to go over your head, there's more atmosphere. Um, well. London, Newport, Hull, we, we took hundreds. Like, yeah. Sometimes, I think the most we are, like, sometimes we get like five or six 50 seated coaches, then people go in their own cars, people people that stay over. Um, so, a couple of what stands out with every service station <laughs> used to be robbed. <laughs> No matter, no matter what, they did take anything. Some phone charges, didn't even have phones, just took charges, donuts, <laughs> anything, just anything, just teddy Net bears. cushions, yeah, every, teddy bears. Yeah, everything, and then coming home from London, from one fight. We had, we had the services, and then uh, police come all over, the pod come all over the bus, got on. This coach is not leaving until everything's paid for. And I'm, and I'm, I'm the only sober one. <laughs> you just fought, like... Uh, just fought. I had my wages in my pocket, a few quid in my pocket. Went to the front. I had to sort of settle a bill. Everyone's all pissed, giving them shit and that. Off the head, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fucking pigs and all that. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't need... No, you don't need this. Uh, I'm trying to have a baby then, and then that's one of them. And then Hull. Um, Adam Carden. He still pops in the gym now and trains. Robbed a scarecrow. From the service, he still got it to this day. He still got the scarecrow, and he still, talk, he still talks. Why well, talking about last week to me? Um, he, he's like he's brilliant, good, good kid. And he, he got thrown from one side of the stadium, he jumped, he got it for some reason. He ended up in the middle of Tommy Coyle's fans. Then he went, got thrown over the other side, and he kicked off with this scarecrow all over, all over there. Um, Newport stands out massively. That I remember going to Newport, and he must have been. 200 wanted to travel 300 maybe wanted to stay over um, a couple of days before he went where are you going to stay so I'm going to stay in the Hilton Hotel um, Eddie Matthew going to put me in the Hilton so I stayed in there at the time I was with Oliver Allison and all them Oliver was my coach spent a bit of time with Oliver um, unbelievable man great coach and a sad loss to us yeah yeah um, Oliver we were in our hotel I remember going down one day me and Oliver and there's about 200 of the lads you thought, what all, the fuck all going on I'm thinking, oh no, no, you don't need this. They just, they're all bladdered. <laughs> just and Newport's cheap. It's, it's very cheap. We talked at the time must have been cheap, and they just two hundred scouts just coming. Just, 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 just all like good old matching business people and all that. You're <laughs> all, thinking, well, and matching were just starting at the time. Then they were just, that's when they were coming, coming back coming involved in, in boxing, because uh, we only boxed in a leisure centre. Me and Gavin Reese, the first one. So. Long story short, boxing, so I ended up leaving for the venue, go downstairs, it was like I was at home. The whole hotel was just screaming my name, I yeah. was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And my room, like, wow. We're in Newport yeah. here, we're not in Liverpool, uh, yeah. And I remember being in the changing rooms with the fight, and Paddy Doughty, oh. out of uh, Big Brother. Yeah. So his, his brother was our mate through amateur boxing. Um, for some mad reason, he was a part of the Welsh team. The doc, he, he was involved. Up, he he was involved. He, he ends up boxing for Brian Hughes in Manchester, but I was always mates with the doc. Great fighter, uh, Tony Doughty, unbelievable fighter, and he come to watch me. Although I was boxing a Welsh fella, and he brought Paddy in, in the changing rooms, and Paddy having a laugh with us and all that. Um, but at the time. No one knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. But he was just a big lump. And then he went on big, obviously went on big. Just then, blew, just yeah, blew. he just escalated from yeah. there. So after the fight, the fight we got classed as a technical draw, clash of heads, um, smashed my nose, my nose ended up <laughs> on the other side of my face. It was in a bad way. Um, still is like, but um, I try and, get, try and look all right. Um, went back to the hotel. I remember going through the foyer and his little Martin, 
Cliffy. You, you, you know Cliffy, you know. He is fucking bananas. There he is. <laughs> on a piano, dressing gown on. I think that's fucking like a pink dressing gown. Just, just mad, so sort of mad on the piano. Then he's dancing on the piano and he's just carrying on wolf. And Martin was a, was a, um, a student at Liverpool's ground. I remember, yeah. So it was, must have been no football. It must have been the international break or oh, end of the season. season yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he brought loads of stewards with him. All like older fellas. Wasn't he high up or something? Yeah, he yeah, got a boss job. Yeah. yeah, so he brought all all the stewards with him and everything. And it was like, it was listen, it was mad. And like, do just the stories I could tell, like just him alone, yeah, mate. Just him alone. We've listen, we've had, listen, I've been everywhere with him. He's yeah. a fucking diamond. Do you know what? He seems. I think he's been like around. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, he's been from. But like, you need them type of people, do. and all. Sometimes you've got to be disciplined, and you've got to be. But sometimes you need a bit of normality. He's, yeah. he's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah and, and, like... and no one else as well. He's another one. He's like he's like Bob. He's honest as they come. When I say honest, he'll say like, nah, like, don't do that. You're not doing that. If I'm carrying on woeful, I'm going to laugh on the bed. He's saying, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Tell me, oh, we're going here. We're leaving. And Bob... But then you thank him for that. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like, going back to the Bob with the chair. <laughs> Bob always said, look, if, if you're going to fight, man, I'm retired. If you're going to fight again, I'll hit you with a chair going to the ring. Um, and the day, the day I did retire, so I was in the, in the um, O2 arena, boxed up a lot of Davies, in the changing rooms, walked in the changing rooms, and me and Danny sort of said at the same time, I just said I'm done. And at the time, my missus, at the time, was having my little girl, Cooper. Um, she was like that, about to drop. She shouldn't even be at the fight, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> And then I just went, I'm done. I said, I've got, I've got my kids to look after. I've got a son who's 18, well, he's 19 in October. Yeah. And I've got her, so... I had to, like, you know... Did you feel a relief? Did you oh, feel... Oh, yeah, listen, it just went... Whoosh. And I was just... I was I was made up. I was, like... I was over the moon. I, I, I've done it. I've had a great career. I won 10 titles. Yeah. Box for England. Won a junior Olympic gold medal. Won a senior ABA title. Schoolboy juniors. NABCs. You fucking some... Some boxed, there, like, I must have boxed what every every fighter every fighter is a pro I boxed when at the peak of their career I boxed all the best you never shied away no. I wouldn't shy away from anyone um, and that's the way I, that's the way I want to be known as I want to be known as a kick and fight I don't think anyone could say that you didn't you didn't shy anyone no. you didn't duck it's, like, it's like the Gavin Reese fight it's like the Gavin Reese fight Eddie Ayn put a tweet out can't get him an opponent and I said yeah, I'll have it. And, and yeah, when you want I'll to have fight. a go. I'm not fucking... When do you want to fight? And he's like, like, whatever. And he texts me, can you come to the press conference on Tuesday? I drove, me and Stephen Bourne Jr. drove to Newport. And I only remind you that <laughs> we got stopped twice on the way there by the police. <laughs> it's just like, because it must be in a scouse car on the, on the <laughs> scone of that way. Yeah. But to Newport, so we got stopped twice. Um, Standard in Yeah, and we got, and the fight was done on Twitter. He was European champion. I went, I'll fight you. It doesn't bother me. Boom, boom. I didn't even know how much money I was getting. I'll fight you. I want to fight. Um, so the first, when we went to fight the first time, about five, six weeks before, the fight got called off. Every year now, he's hurt his hand. I went, okay. So I went to Stephen. I need to fight. He went, just wait. I went, no, what? Five fight. weeks. He was going to be out for five weeks yeah. so he could back his heel. Yeah, that, so I went. His hand could heal for the same, yeah. So... Yeah, Eddie, yeah, I meant I'm going to postpone it for like two months. So we went to fight in five weeks. So Eddie, yeah, I'm going to postpone it for two months. I went, Steve, I need to fight. He went, nah, you're fighting for the European title, mate. A big belt. I went, get us a fight. I said, get us a scouse derby. So that's where we rang Stephen Jennings from Tower Hill. Yeah, yeah. And the boxing gen call. Because I want to I fight. I don't want to not fight. I want, I'm a fighter. Um, and that local derby yeah. is a big one, though. As and well, everyone's going to me, that's a risk that, you know, if he beats you, he's fighting for the European title. You're giving him that opportunity, yeah, but, but yeah, I knew he weren't going to beat me. So. Yeah, uh, and then go, so going back to I keep jumping ahead. Don't worry, going don't worry. Go back to the, the where they retired. I was in the bar at the end of the, at the fight. The Alvaro Davies one. We took over London again. We stayed at the O2, the Continental, the main hotel there, um, and it was just full of all all the lads. And then coming, some of them brought the missus, a couple of my family members were there. And then we just sit at the bar, just going, "What a kill! I'm done. I'm that's a relief more than anything." And but they, they, they all like so and, and, and yeah, and like all and I and they all went, thank God. They were made up. They made up. I'd be tired. But then the first thing he said is, Who are we gonna get to follow now? We need <laughs> we need someone to follow. Yeah. Um, and 
Dan zeg je, ja, dan pas mijn Bob zegt, oh, if I see you. En dan komen ze weer in. If I see you walking to a ring and you get in it with a chair. <laughs> so you won't get in the ring. And that's what you need, that's what you need commit. Yeah, of course. You need people who... Who look out for yeah, you. Look out for you. Look out for you. Don't want nothing, don't need nothing from you. Yeah. Um, and then, like, going back again to that fight, I remember, because Bob's on all my tickets, and on that fight, I only got so many tickets. So I went to Bob, they're your tickets, you deal with them. So no one can, and I just said, someone, look, Bob's got, Bob's got the tickets. You put it in the paper. No, that, that was, it. so a few years before <laughs> that, I remember Bob, <laughs> Bob uh, fighting in Manchester, it might have been fighting Colin or someone. Anyone need tickets, ring Bob. And Bob is not better. And, and his phone didn't stop. Then he, he, he ended up doing the tickets from there and he sold some tickets, mate, fucking hell. That's what um, <laughs> And then for the O.R. Davies fight, I only got a limited number of tickets. Obviously, A and Bellew with the, the main attraction. We're going to sell it out either way. So everyone who needs a ticket had to go to Bob and Bob. Also, we had a list of everyone who'd been all the fights. Who'd been going. Yeah, so anyone who'd been all the fights. He'd look after them yeah, first. They deserve They deserve them, yeah. Um, and it just it went from there and then... I, and then on the morning, I remember getting beat, going back to the fights, getting beat by Wild Davies, went in the gym on the Monday, and another good fella, you know, Peter Morvo. Yeah. Um, another Evertonian, he he come in with the ticket stub, said, Can you have my money back? I went, Why went you got fucked? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, Fucking hell. You don't need that on I don't, a I said, I'll go over, went to the gym on the Monday, and he goes, I want my money back, you were shite. <laughs> and I, but that's what you need. Yeah. He still does it now. Still, uh, he still gives me stick every day. He's a good fella. Oh, yeah, he's fucking brilliant. This is one. Morgo's our fella. He's a good fella, mate. One of the best fellas you'll meet. Honest to God. Comical, mate. He's fucking mad, mad. <laughs> but a diamond of a man. Um, yeah. And you need people like him in your life. And he's in the gym as well. Every day. Seen? Every day. Every day. Comes, Have you know a few of the lads from the match? Yeah. He comes to just give me stick. In your gym. He mate. just comes to give me stick, Morgo. <laughs> the band said it all the boxers love him yeah because what you see is what you get and he's right no way he's, yeah, he's yeah, straight yeah. as they come yeah, yeah. he'll fucking shite you by the way <laughs> who are you boxing him he's fucking crap <laughs> who are boxing him for but, uh, but that's what you want yeah he's, always, he's a good man oh fucking brilliant Um, boxing today daddy if you wanted the boxing promoters Eddie Aim Frank Warren Bob Aram what would you do differently when you say this, um, I think we were talking about yeah, this before. Yeah, starts getting involved a bit um, with shows and that. I, me, I think you should win a central area title. This is the old, this is like the, the old, old way. This is the old school way. Was yeah, it the again? old school central area title, boxer of British title. Oh sorry, central area title, British Commonwealth European. Five for That's how it title. always was, though, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, for me, British Commonwealth European title to all the three of them at one one time. Kevin Satchel's the last person I know, doesn't it? From Bootle, Kevin Satchel. Yeah, well, from the Arctic, from the Evan Red Triangle. Yeah, yeah. He won the British Commonwealth, he was British Commonwealth European champion at what he retired with, with the three belts. Um, some achievement, that you know. To have them three belts, all them three belts at once, three titles at once, is a massive achievement. And he, he done it. Um, it's so hard yeah. to do. And, but it's the right way. Like, you see kids now. They get, they get fast forwarded oh, to yeah. fucking world titles and all He's that, the, you know. Yeah, he, like, the promoting our, in our city, in, in the Northwest. They need to like help each other instead of pulling away yeah. from each other. He's got him, he's got them, he's got them. Boom, boom, boom. Let's put the fights on. It's the fight. It's the fans you want to see. Do you want to see the? F- yeah, and I, I think people are scared to upset. Yeah, the apple. No, they just don't. No, people are scared to fight each other. They're scared to show the face in town. To get beat, so what? You're a boxer. You're gonna get beat. Apart from me, right But I'm <laughs> saggy. But you're a boxer. You're gonna get beat. Stop kidding people going 20. Do you want that record, do you think I've it is? I've seen people who are 20 and old, and all I'm thinking, how the fuck's he 20 and old? How's he 10 and old? Because they fought, like, fucking... No one. No, no one's... Because they're, selling, cause they're selling tickets. They're getting guided, right? They're getting looked after. They're, they're going the long way. Do you want to see, you want to see the fight, like, every round? Every, yeah. no, you, you, out of we, need, we need some local derby fights, and there's loads in the city, and there's loads of great fights in the city. Even in the northwest, and even... All over the country, yeah. from like down there's, south and up. There's, you know. there's pros now. Who wouldn't win a national title? Who wouldn't win a novice national title? They wouldn't win a novice national title. And the professional. And he's been, he been fast forwarded. Yeah. So. And the, and the professional boxers. 
that I need to win and, I, and, that, and I, I'm not that's, the only, that's what I'm about to say yeah, be honest you know I'm not mean? the only one saying that I think loads of people say loads of people know loads of boxing people know mm-hmm. loads of coaches know they wouldn't win a novice title but the professional title, uh, professional champion do it the right now, way now I blame the boxing board as well for giving them the licences and why do you think that is if you... so when I turn pro you have to have your background let's see now yeah. now they send someone from the boxing board to so come and see how good you are in pads pads on it back if you're good on the pad, you can turn pro. Fucking hell. It's hard to get on. I stated earlier on, it's hard to get a tele license. Or a driving license, then get a professional boxing license. And I don't know whether it's just money, or because they want the, the, the fees and all that. But it's mad. Honestly, they would not get it. Half of them now mm. wouldn't win another title. I think to be a professional fighter, you need to win a belt. You need, uh, sorry, a, t- a national title. Yeah, it, it, or it, it, England. Go, go through the uh, Go through the and steps. Then, and then step up to a professional and go that way. Yeah. Go that way. It, it's like what, what do you think with all this? With it's the carry on you see it all the time with Fury, Yusuf, Joshua, and all that. I know money talks. Do you know what I mean? I seen. I seen it. Funny enough, I seen um, Adam Catchell and Frank Warren having a little bit on yeah. talk sport, and I like Adam. He's got. And he, listen, I, 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 I mm. fully agree with him. What he said to Frank, Frank Warren, seen his ass a little bit, saying, you know, this one. Well, why can't he fight? Number four and number five and whatever, thank God, hit the roof, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then, why can't these fights be made, Daddy? What, 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 what do you think? It, you know, I think it's ego, isn't it? Um, and because they don't need the money, <laughs> they don't need the money. Joshua and Fury don't need the money, but I think it's who, who's doing this, and I've got this, that, that side. I'm the A side, you're well, the B yeah. side. We were talking about that before, like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. 70 30. Fuck, I, I seen, I seen Bell, you speaking about it. 70, 30, yeah. mate, that was fuck. And, and, and he still said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah. yeah. And, and, then he, and he backed out. So. It's crackers, mate. It's, I mad, just, it's mad, to tell honest. And I, I don't think we're going to see it. I, I don't. You know, I've seen, like, he's Someone said, that, you know, he's getting 100 million, isn't he? For this and Saudi's so, mates just. If like, he's getting 100 million, he's going to box him, is he? 100 million quid, oh, fucking hell. And the same as in Ghana, obviously, in, 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 in UFC. He can bang, he's fucking the hardest hit. I, I get all that, mate. And you're just going to see Fury just dance down, mate, jab him, jab his head, and then, you know, hit him. And F- Fury will not lose a boxing fight against a UFC fighter. Not in a million years. But then Fury wouldn't beat a UFC fighter in, in, if in it was UFC rules. That's just the way it yeah, is. Yeah, of course. That's why loads of people go to me, what's the hardest? Blah, blah. They're two different sports. Yeah. Amateur boxing and professional boxing, they're two different sports. Two different sports. Sunday League football, professional football championship football the different games levels yeah yeah if Tyson Fury tries to have an MMA fight you get you get beat up you get beat up if an MMA fighter sorry yeah, if an MMA fighter tries to have a boxing fight he's going to get his head boxed off you get beat up yeah that, that's just it's fucking mad mate isn't it I, I just I just don't get you want to see the, the best fight the best don't yeah. you know what I mean and that's yeah. all like you've just been saying there about professional fighters you know people getting licenses to fuck like, going back to like the old school days like Tony McHolland Jamie McKeever Everton Park Sports Centre British title fight twice unbelievable fight that's how it should be British title fights I think that box uh, John Taxton British title fight They're proper fights yeah proper I box crawler proper proper boxing fights that's the two of the best at the time yeah. fight each other you yeah. know what I mean not fucking Paul Eddie box satchel British title fight they're proper fights that's what people want to wanna see. Want to see? Want to see? Yeah. Well, and I like you go to like a big, a big show. Um, yeah, I think James, James the Gearbox, Paul Smith for the British title fight. Wow. At the Echo was that? Yeah, one? yeah at yeah. the Echo. That's like massive. Ma- that uh, James the Gearbox, unbelievable fighter. Paul Smith, unbelievable mm. fighter. That's a proper fight. But you're not seeing. You're not now. You don't see that now. You're seeing it's 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 starting to, you know, fade off. People are getting. Fights picked for yeah. where you think fight the best, do you know what yeah. I mean? That's all you want. The people are paying good money. money. But even on big shows though, Daddy, as well, when you see it. Todd Sunbox Carl Froch for yeah. a British title fight. And They're yeah. proper fights. Yeah. Now it's like, I'll go that way. I'll leave that British title. And it's disres- for me, it's dis- disrespect, isn't it? It's Not disrespect. And the promoters as well. There's too many belts. Fucking Mickey there's more belts yeah. than fucking in, in top man there's, fucking <laughs> to God. There's, fucking, there's more belts out there honest to God it's crazy no it's it's fucking mad mate and you just you just wish they'd like put their heads together and try and work together but 
it's one of them again, yeah. mate. They just <laughs> boxing is fucking crazy at the moment in it. So yeah. another thing, who's the biggest influences in your life and why? <laughs> There's a few, you know. Um, I want to go with number one. It's got to be. But then again, I'll start from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. The influence has got to be Tony Chandler. Massive part of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a massive part of me. Me career. Um, turn me into top amateur. Won every national title with him. All my everything. Um, then Georgie Vaughan. They can't yeah. like. You can't describe what that man's done for me. Um, trainer, friend. Trainer, friend, best mate, family. Um, made me speak to my dad again, which is... Oh. When I say made me, he just like, my dad, my dad tried to get in touch with me later on in life. Left me at an early age, come back into my life, about 18, 19. Um, spoke to my sister, previous. Um, and then George said to me, I think you need to speak to your dad, you know. Just something's missing from the jigsaw. Um, did that at first when he said that to you did he take it on board or no I said I'm fucking not speaking to him he left me I've travelled the world without him other, other boxers had the dad um, other boxers had the dad with them other, other ma and all that my ma wouldn't fly so I couldn't have her <laughs> um, she wouldn't step on a plane so they had the dads not around them and guiding them and so were you a bit what's the name about that like yeah, yeah, fucking I still am if I'm honest though um, what was your sister like when you told your sister and if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, she was just, he got in touch with her first, um, reached out to her and then she told me and, and I went, nah, it's not happening, not for me, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not she's played no part in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then George said, nah, you need to, you do want to be signing a big contract, earning a few quid, a um, bit of guidance, oh, well, I've done okay, my mum's done okay so far. I fucking have had the best of everything. I've had a boss upbringing. Mm-hmm. Never went for nothing. Never, never went short. I've always had that. Got an Auntie Lynn. She made sure they had everything. Um, Uncle Paul, Tony, they made sure they had the like. Right. They put you on the right path. Yeah, yeah and they, my, yeah. my Auntie Mary, um, who, who lived in our, on our estate, they made sure they had everything. I never went short for anything in life. Because um, yeah. it's one of them, it's like, if my cousins had it, they made sure I had it. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean, it's like we were all one big family. Yeah. Um, so I never, I never went, I never went short. Um, so I said no at first. I don't, I don't need them. Um, and then, anyway, long story short, I ended up saying to George, okay, and then we're, we're best mates. It's mad, isn't it? We're fucking, <laughs> I get loud, like me and my dad, we speak every day, um, close to me. Never missed a fight. Stood at the back of the hall. Didn't, didn't want to be fucking... Didn't, involved, no. didn't want to be involved. And that's what, again, where I stayed at back... But he was there, though. Yeah, 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 was there. That's where I stayed at back. Um, to, me, to me mum not being involved. And that's why I think I was successful. Yeah. I wish your mum, when you told your mum, your no, dad she, was going to be... she's made up. She, I'm, 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 I'm Did your mum probably say to you, look... Let him be part of your, yeah, you know. Me, but it, she, she gave me a bit of shit. Like, go <laughs> on, go and ring your dad. Ask him, <laughs> ask him for my child maintenance, no whatever. She, she, she still says it now, right? I'm going to ask that come for my maintenance for all them years he fucked off. But, but proper, it's good. Proper, proper, old school mum, yeah, man. Yeah, and she never, like, I said early on, she never come in to the boxing, got involved. I mean, we live next door to the Solly, the boxing club. On she the, never even came. Yeah, she, on the Solly show, she'd get involved, she'd make the sandwiches, she'll do... She'd Coffee, do, teas and she'd all She'd do that. something at, at a show. When I, when I go in the ring as a kid, she'd go for a walk. Um, and nine, as an amateur, nine times out of ten, well, nine and a half out of ten, I won, because I never lost many. Um, especially on, that, that, on, that. The, on the British scene. I only lost it mainly international level. I, in Liverpool or Mad or in England, yeah. I never lost. I, I was I was for a good for a kid. I was shit hot. Um, so my dad come into my life and I'm a, I'm a, we're friends. We get on every day. Speak every day. He's my dad. Um, but it's mad because like on Father's Day, I'll buy my mum something. Yeah, yeah, but because it's, it's always like obviously at the time. Well, I'll thank my mum. Yeah, yeah. My mum, my mum raised me. Um, and he knows that, but. We're custody, we're good. good, you're good we're yeah. good, yeah, we're good. And that was all through to Georgie Vaughan? Yeah, just, just, 
Yeah, just signs me. Go on, go on, speak to, go on, speak to him. Um, give me the little thing, you know. A little nudge to yeah. go and do it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm going back to the influences of my life. Alan Lynch, massive, massive. What that man doesn't know about boxing, amateur boxing anyways. Just an encyclopedia of boxing. It's like George. If, if they don't know, it's not worth knowing. It's what it's, they know everything. And I always say him and George can't be wrong because they're always right. They're always right. No matter what, they're always right. <laughs> uh, and I remember setting me amateur but I wanted to set me amateur boxing club up because everyone went to me, you're going to go and coach the Solly, I'm guessing. Um, and I didn't want it. I wanted my own. You wanted to do your I've got my own legacy. Um, and I felt I was going, like I'd become a personal trainer at 17. So I knew... Yeah, the sort of culture. Back, I, knew, I knew the culture industry. Yeah, I knew the culture industry. I knew um, that side of it. And, like people think I have only been involved in in coaching, fitness side of coaching for for a few years. But I was qualified at seventeen, um, and I've studied uh, since behind the scenes and done done certain stuff. So, and Alan, when I said to Alan, I want to set my own boxing club up. I might need a touch, and he helped me. He he, he was there. He's the, chair. Yeah, he's the chairman of the V of our Mercer and Cheshire and he he showed me what to do, told me what to do and, and it's gone from there and I owe them a lot. I owe Tony Chalmer, Georgie Vaughan, my mum more than anyone and, and Alan that fucking a massive mm-hmm. thank you, do you know what I mean? Without them I most probably wouldn't be the man I am today. Any regrets in your life, Daddy? Got a few. <laughs> Got a few, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, well, no, what I have, right? And again, it's fucking Georgie. I remember being 21, 22. Have you bought a house yet? No. When are you going to buy an house? I'll buy one next, next time I fight, I'll buy one. And now it's with thousands of pennies then. Yeah. Fucking hell, mate. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, I'll buy one. Blah, blah. What else do you want? Never. I bought a new watch, George. <laughs> what do you mean you bought a fucking watch? Bought got a new car. Why? Go and buy, you need bricks and water. You need, that's what I was just saying, bricks and water. You need. Investments. Yeah. Okay. Nah, I'm alright, I'll get, because you don't think it's going to run out, so. You don't, you, 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 you fucking, I was, well, I turned pro at 18 and I was getting fucking good money. Yeah. Um, and just being a boy. Yeah. Sainies, jeans, shoes, all of these. Well, everything that comes with it, yeah. Watches and then, I remember buying one, right? And when I got them, because I was proud when I, when I bought my first house um, I went and got him come at me you didn't tell me you were saying no no, no. come at me and what do you reckon it's a crack a lot I went I've just bought it George I, and I was made up myself you're pr- yeah. yeah I went just and he went that'll do he went but you should have done it five years ago <laughs> 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 you still had something to say yeah and I'm like, so I, I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got I've got properties yeah. do you know what I mean and but if I wouldn't have had him, so... You could have pissed your yeah, money up the like, wall, Daddy, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and me, like me, me, me dad should have been there. To, to give you that? Where my dad come into my life, but I wouldn't listen to him. At 19, 20, like, whatever. Well, why should I listen to you? Now you mean that... that no, that's just... That, yeah. like when Georgie said me, buy an house, it shouldn't have been George telling me. It should have been my dad saying, right, the accountant's doing this, boom, 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 this is what you're doing. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And in uh, it's it's but we're, we're we're okay now. We're yeah. mates. But again, George, like you know, it's it's mad. Like I'm I'm doing the same now to our kids. Like Jazz will tell you. He says Jazz, go and buy loads of houses, mate. Please go and buy some houses. Forget boxing. Just be f- live like a tramp. <laughs> live just live like a tramp. I say to all our fighters, why do you want? Why are you in that car? Why have you got that watch on? Mm-hmm. Why? Go and buy an house. Because in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, and it's paid for, you, you, you're happy. You're all, 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 you I see, you know, so he I was going to ask you about yeah. that. He had a little, did he tip his feet in a little bit? Yeah, he, had, he was good. When I say good, he went good to like make a living out of it. 
But he's, he's, he's a fight. Yeah, 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 but me personally, I didn't want to. I think most boxing dads, the sun's coming through. A lot of them say it's they don't want it. It's too hard. Fuck that. I don't want to watch him get. I, I, I've never. So we went to Birmingham on his first fight. And we got. I remember. Well, I called the coach, Jim, who come with me. We got there. And um, the way in, and the fellow went, Can I have a word? He went, yeah, he went, I didn't know he was fighting your son. And what his name's Derry Matthews, mate. You rang me for the bout, and there's the text message. <laughs> was, his name's Derry Matthews, he's got the same name as me. Yeah, but I didn't think he'd be your son. Well, who's he going to be for the next door neighbours? I <laughs> <laughs> called that to me. So he went, I need to, I need to have a word with him. I need your lads to not go too good, too, too hard. I went, he's 16, mate. He's fucking. It's his first fight. He's in puberty. He's fucking. He's like. He's like raving. Fucking. And he went, he went. <laughs> the, the kid is boxing from the traveling community, and if he gets beat up, they'll kick off in here. So I went okay. So we've got out. Fucking place is chocker. So chocker next minute. So before that, we'd already had another lad on John McDowell, one of our lads. Not fighting. One of theirs, oh. and he beat our lad. Beat theirs up. Bad. Bad. So then. Our Terry's on, and then first round. But I think our Terry heard the fella saying it to me. Do you think it's got in his head? I knew it, I knew it because I, after the first round, what the fuck's up with you? He went, What? What the fuck's up with you? I said, Get out there now, smash him. Get out there now. He went, What? I went, Get out there. Be asked what all these are saying. Get out there. Second round, boom, boom, stands and counts, gone, kid's gone. Then he just bat, Terry just bat him, got to the decision. Fuck, they're all kicking off, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Got nothing to do, mate. So he's, he's a kid, blah, blah. So then we had another kid on, Carl Breen. Don't tell me he puts the other kid. He knocked the kid out. Listen, he was 50, he was 15 at the time, Carl, but he was massive. He was about 16. Massive. He's one of, our, one of the biggest punches I've seen as a kid. And he absolutely KO'd this kid. Hit him to the floor. It was scary. But as, as, a, co- as a coach, I'm a father. You know, father, don't give it to bad one. I've jumped like, fucking hell, it's not just... Yeah, it's yeah. anyway. Zed's hit the canvas and Long all that. Long story short, so in the change room, said every one of you is get your stuff, you're getting changed in the van. <laughs> Fuck off, right out the door. <laughs> Fuck off. And then, <laughs> and then, from there, I can't tell you, like, playing with the box, you know what I mean? Just, and, yeah. and I just went, lad, if you're going to do it, you're all in. Just even around the gym yeah. or? Yeah, yeah, I went, if you're going to do it, you're all in. You're all in or not, yeah. If not, jibby. Um, and then, I went, no, what, jibby? You're not good enough. You don't want the dedication. Because um, you've got to live the life of an athlete. You've got to, like... It's a young lad. He's probably fucking girls or yeah, whatever and fucking yeah. everything else that comes with him. So then I got in touch with my mate. <laughs> and my mate him, got him a job. Mitch got him a job. Boss job. Um, oh, Mitch... Um, Mitch Walsh, yeah. Mitch Walsh, yeah. yeah. Do, 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 again, Mitch to the loads for the community. Yeah, Lord, yeah. mate. Helps, helps everyone. Helps flying, everyone. Mitch? Yeah, yeah. Do, listen. In Texas, the, 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 the flying, mate. Yeah. The building game. The, the property. And he give our daddy a job and our daddy's cracking it. He's doing, he's doing very good. And That's good. I'm proud of him. I made it with him. Um, so I've, I've felt I've raised two good ones. Um, it, it, my daughter's a lunatic. But Most, my uh, daughter's as well, mate. The fucking mad mate. Yes, just, they're the best, aren't they? Yeah. They're the, the best. Um, <laughs> but I've, 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 I feel I've done a good job. And, and the, the, the two mums they've got, I've, I've done a great job. So I owe them a lot as well. Yeah, no, that's good. So what's in the pipeline for Derry Matthews? Um, just producing champions, helping people, um, being as happy as I can be, and just just being me. Just I'm just happy. <laughs> and everyone like you see a lot of boxers so retiring. Um, to be honest, you see a lot of people fighters on the on the podcast and they're negative. Negative. I feel like they're like they're down. Even any sport. Is it because you think because they miss it, you think, or they're not involved? Yeah, there's life it? after boxing, though, isn't he? And there's life after football. There's life, you know. Mm. And if they've got, the, they play, they've done at the highest level, say, in boxing and football, they can, you know, they still got a lot to give, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and... The knowledge and everything. And I, I think a lot of people, a lot of them are ashamed. And not like, like, because you've been a professional boxer or a professional footballer or an athlete, anything. Mm. Does it mean you can't go and work on a building site? Mm. And I don't think a lot of them can, can grasp that, like... I've come from that background. You've been in that spotlight yeah, or what's all life. Been... So what? You've, you've done... Just be happy. Just be happy. And, and, and 
I don't. I, it's mad. I, I watch. I watch all James English. I watch all all the podcasts and like Billy Moore's. What I watch them and you see a lot of negativity in, in a lot of people. Just just try and be happy. <laughs> in, in how I'll do? I'll just say it. it's like they're always like I could have done. I should have done this. It's gone. Let it go. Yeah. Start something new. Be be happy. Just. Try and be a bit more positive. Positive, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, like you see a lot of people on them saying they've had everything, now they've got nothing. Go and get it again. Yeah, yeah. Go and get it again. You've had it once, go and get it again. Go and get it again. You get out what you put in, really, innit? You yeah, know what I mean? It's yeah. that, that saying, innit? Yeah, and when I'm up at four o'clock every day, I go, I go and get it, do you know what I mean? I, I go. I'm, I'm a man. Yeah. I'm a man. I, I do everything. But now I have, I, I'm having my dinner at 11 o'clock. Well, sorry, 10 o'clock. I'm mistaken chips at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. I'm, 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 that's your I'm done. fucking day, yeah, though, isn't done. it? I, that's, yeah. So, there's a, there's a way, and, like, just be happy, everyone. And I, I just, I'm, I've got, like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm in a good place. Um, I've got good friends, good family, good kids. Just so. continue to do what you're doing, yeah. And, and I love, I love coaching. And I love producing champions, and my aim now is to get as many champions as we can, and install what Georgie Vaughan installed to me. Pass down to you. Go, yeah. Go and buy houses. Go and buy something. Go and give him good yeah. life advice. In yeah. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go and do something. Not everyone makes it boxing. Not everyone. Not it's it's so hard. So yeah, it's like, yeah. Not pff, how many boxers got a mortgage? It's so hard. People don't realise, well, oh, he's a, what they see on social media, all like, that, that's false. Fucking social media is, it's know, false, it's ruining people, it's yeah. false, it's just like, it's right to be yeah. something that's not fucking, it's, 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 it's false, it's just like, every, everyone thinks, oh, because he's a professional boxer, they're he's, making all kinds of he's coins, he's making a fortune, it's bollocks. When you've got to pay out fucking trainers fees, and, and, and all kinds of, like, so you your everything. mortgage, your car, your trainers fees, everything. Think about training it. Training camps. Yeah, training camps, your kids, your food. It's hard. So if you are a local business out there and you, you want to help people, go and help young fighters coming through. Every young fighter needs a touch. Yeah. They all need a touch. And I, I was lucky. So you I had good sponsors. I had that. boss sponsors. I had I had a guy. I had I had sponsors fucking calling out my ears. We're good people though. Yeah. Who I had from day one till I finished. I had I had one for fifty two fights. The same, the same. Give me the same money for every single fight. That's a pause. You from yeah. day one. Well, done. Yeah. It's so you you they do need them. Yeah. So it's so I'm I'm like if I was in a position. Yeah. You, you know people. Of course you do. You, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And again, just taking back, I love just producing champions, guiding them in the right way. My younger kids who have got from the age of 10, because I coach 10 year olds, right, to make sure they're in education. If they're not behaving in school, then I'll come to the gym. That's a discipline, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. If they're expelled from school, then I'll come to the gym. That's just. Or the mum or the dad say, listen, they, you have a way that they're not listening to me. It's happened. One, one of the kids, the mum says, he's been sent home from school. So that's, yeah, you're meant to fight tomorrow. It's off. Kids crying. You're not fighting. Me, 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 good me, and, Gen, me and Geno, you're not fighting. That's it. Well, you're not good in school. You're not boxing. So you're not representing our club. And that's how... But that's be. teaching them how to fucking... That's a life yeah. skill, isn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? That, so that's it. And, you, and you, can't, you can't buy that. You've got to teach it. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed sharing the good and the bad and the ugly with us. I just want to say thank you for sharing your story. Boss, Teddy. boss, I enjoyed it. How can anyone contact you through your socials and stuff? Um, just go on Daddy's Fit Club. Um, so we have someone on social media who runs it. Yeah. I try to stay off of them as much as I can. I've just been staying. It's, I think it's all false in, in, in yeah, certain yeah. ways. Yeah. But we've got a, a good gym, fitness club. Um, we're busy. We're open from 5 o'clock in the morning. First session's at half 5 and then we run right through till half 8 at night. So we're quite busy. So anyone who wants to get involved, at Teddy's Fit Club. On Daddy, social media. Brilliant, mate. Thanks very much. Perfect. Thank Cheers, you. Mate, so much. Tony Morell.